pretty much always comes, but. Um, yeah, and they're outside. Do you want me yeah, to so, bring them in? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We told them 15 minutes only. All right. We'll call this meeting of CPDC to order. Uh, first item on the agenda are the folks that are walking in right now. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I'm sure we've kept you waiting at the time or two. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the floor is yours. Yeah. Make this quick. I know the board and everything else on the agenda, and, and we need another continuance. Um, the reason for the continuance is the ongoing uh, work with the Conservation Commission. They've decided because of the involvement of DEP, they want they want to get a third party peer reviewer involved just to make sure that they're dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. So that's taking uh, us out a little bit. We're going to continue. Um, this Wednesday night, hopefully by the next meet, their, their next meeting after Wednesday, we'll have everything sorted out. So we just wanted to come in tonight just to update the board. I, the board was looking for um, a, a couple of things. First, uh, with regards to the lighting, we wanted to get some more detail on the lighting uh, up front with regards to what we had what we had uh, talked about in that there'll be a light fixture up outside each of the, the units. So we've incorporated that into, into the updated photometric lighting plan, as well as the security lighting that'll be near the garage door. Uh, we've added a couple of bollards out back by the, um, the pathway, the, walk, the sidewalk from the parking lot. So that's all updated. And you'll see that it's, it's all fairly low level lighting uh, without without much impact. The second issue was with regards to the what the front of the building is going to look like landscape-wise. We've updated the the, the uh, rendering, the colored rendering of the front uh, to be more true to form with regards to the wall and the slope. Uh, and Andrew, if you could pull that one up. So, um, but we've got the, the wall uniform height of roughly three feet, and now the, the rendering shows the embankment. There. Um, so that's that's, that's uh, true to the, the grading plan. Uh, the only thing that this doesn't indicate was is the the next item, which was the pathways from the doors, and what we decided to do, uh, if uh, Andrew could pull up the, uh, the rating plan. <laughs> is is just to go straight out from the two egress doors to the, to the uh, city the town sidewalk, and, and we envision this to be done with landscape stones um, and a small break in the wall uh, at the two locations. So we've we've also shown that on our cross sections. Um, cross section is the one that's just uh, the area where the stairs will be. Um, and just the location where the stairs will not. And this is an indication of the bank landscaping uh, and wall. So I think that was the update. I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll start with one quick one. Are you proposing handrails on the, uh, the stairways and the sidewalks? Um, no, because they're, we envision them to be more placed into the, the landscape and to be fairly, they're not entrances, they're merely egress. So we, have, we don't want to draw any attention to them. Uh, obviously, if if the interpretation from the building department code-wise is that we need to have handrails, then we will, but that's not the vision that we have right now. Other questions? Yeah, I, I have mean, one quick question. What's that? I have one quick sure. question. Um, 
because I'm not doing the math right. The, the slope that's out there's the retaining wall. Then there's the um, then there's the landscaped and, and stepped area. What's the slope of that landscaped area? So three to one. So we we do know that staff has been working on a kind of a rolling draft decision. Happy to continue to work with staff over the next couple of weeks to hopefully get that in good shape. Forward. Um, there's no other no 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 other documents you need or revisions that you feel are necessary. I think we're in a good place. So just once the conservation commission finalizes theirs, and if we don't see any major changes coming out of this. Again, I think it's out of an abundance of caution because the commission has been told by DDP one thing, and now DDP won't give them any further input. They want to make sure that um, all of the input documentation that we do to defend our, uh, our design and our compliance with the regulations is, is fairly foolproof, because DDP's, DDP could step in if they, if the, Conservation Commission issues a decision and they and they don't like it, but they won't give. They've, they've told us that they won't give any more any more input or <laughs> clarification on their on their commentary. Uh, so that's where we are. Um, well, I think this was all. I mean, this is all the material that we had asked for before. Uh, so, and I I don't see. It doesn't bring up any additional questions for me. So. I do have uh, another quick one. Uh, your letter states that you have moved the or marked the emergency generator, the gas meter, and a uh, bar uh, grilling area. Where are those on the plan? I think it was the transformer. Uh, got moved to here. Uh, there's a provision for uh, the emergency generator to be here. Uh, we're, we're thinking that there's a patio area over in this area um, for uh, gas grill because we can't have any gas grills on the patios or the decks by the fire code. The gas meters will all be in the, in the um, back of the building. And may I ask, at what point will you be asking for signage? Uh, we will comply with the uh, sign bylaw. As far as that is, we envision probably just a, a small monument signed out front and comply with the setbacks and the size requirements. And let's just make sure the address is. Okay. But nothing on the building in any way. Maybe possibly just during the original sale. Real estate, real estate, yeah. or what have you, but again, compliant with any, any sign, sign by law. These are rentals, right? No. So how are you going to enforce the no grill rule on those back decks that no one can see for the town doesn't have it'll be done by the association yeah, will they do it well what, i mean I, i've been involved in condominium associations and, and where it comes down is the master the, the master insurance policy and the enforcement of the master insurance policy because it would be a violation what what i've been told is if if there's an incident then the insurance company doesn't doesn't uh cover any loss from an event like that. So the con it behooves the condominium association to have the rules, enforcement and fines uh, incorporated in, in any of that. So our documentation would, would outline that and the rules for the, the original condo documents that 
are drafted by our team. And just to supplement that, I mean, this, this envisions professional management. <clears throat> so generally what we like to put in the condo docs is that, of course, there is a restriction and it is uh, enforced by the management company and that there's also generally going to be a fine, an escalating fine type process that's involved as well. And that fine becomes a lien on the unit. So at the end of the day, it does have a title type enforcement as well. If I can draw a little bit more on that, we, all the shoulders we built, we haven't had any problems with it, and it's all always been in the condominium documents as far as any gas grills on the uh, patio areas. So we haven't had any enforcement problems. Thank you. Yeah, I don't see anything else. I mean, it, assuming that, um, assuming that, uh, like you said, big changes aren't um, are coming from from Montcalm. I think that we probably have any other questions. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We want to continue. Oh yeah. To April thirteenth at seven forty-five. CPDC continue the public hearing for 259 267 Main Street to April 13th. 13th. 745. 745. Second. Second. Are you moving that? Yeah. yeah. All right. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you guys actually have time on your agenda tonight to talk about zoning. Um, first, I'm going to give you an update if you didn't see my email. The design guidelines for downtown Smart Coast District were approved by the state. Yeah, Those are on the website. They're, they've been sent to developers we know are looking to develop projects downtown for phase two of the 40 r district. Um, so great job. Um, and the zoning from November town meeting was also approved by the attorney general's office. So that will be incorporated into the new zoning bylaw probably in a month. So it has to be published in the paper and there's a whole thing the town clerk has to do and then it'll be in the bylaw. So good stuff. Okay. Um, Does it go in um, place as soon as that approval happened or no, as soon as you do the notice? It's been effective since first publish of the public okay. hearing, gotcha. actually. So back whenever that was last June, right. yeah. probably. Um, it's actually, it actually claws back to then. So. It's effective. Good work, community. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Good work, you guys. Yeah. Push through. You guys. I don't know. Cracking the whip. I don't think through. we were pushing <laughs> things through. I think we spent a long time talking about that stuff. Um, so, we um, have sent around some work that we've done in the last week on the table of uses and the definitions. I don't know if you all had a chance to look at it. Um, it's a lot. We tried to just focus on one area as it's reflected on your agenda, where it says focus on business and service uses. And we, it, it actually became more work and brought up too many questions. And there are so many things we want to change about this use table, it's almost hard to, to start going down that road and then walk it back. So um, we went back to our original plan and just really started looking at everything um, and tried to hammer out some ideas that we had and are interested in any feedback you want to provide. So. Um, in terms of an approach to this, right, this brings up all sorts of different things, but in terms of an approach, as I look through the material that you pulled together, which thank you, there's a lot there. Um, <laughs> um, I think that I, it makes 
the, it would make the most sense to me, and I'm open to other ideas, but to actually sort of go through the definitions first and make sure that we all agree, A, that a definition should be changed or a new a definition should be added or what have you, so that we're clear that we're all talking about the same thing, and then, um, and then tackle the, um, the table. Sure. Um, I had comments that I gave to you on the thumb drive mm -hmm. for definitions. I thought a couple of things we needed to add or look at. Mm -hmm. So to remind and refresh and update people's memories on like what we decided a few months ago when we were looking at the table was to try to have like broader terms in the table and then definitions that would say things like including but not limited to and then list some of the uses that we have in mind that would fit into that broader um, you know definition I guess and um, rather than having a use table that has like 250 or whatever different uses in it um, like some towns sometimes do it that way it's kind of cumbersome so, should we go through the definitions John suggested? But uh, just to that point, typically mm -hmm. codes are assumed that if it's not included, something's not included, it's prohibited. Right. right. So if we say, including but not limited to, then we have to be specific about the things we don't want, otherwise they're included. Yeah, that's a really good point. So that's something that we've talked about with town council because um, it's not that's not actually a statement that we make in our bylaw. Okay. So bylaws that's, that a lot of bylaws say uses that are not expressly permitted are prohibited and we don't say that in our bylaw. Um, and then we also have a category in the use table for uses substantially similar to a by right use. So we have a couple. So far that's all inclusion though. Right. So how do we prohibit something we don't know? We have things that we say no across the board. So does that mean, though, that anything that isn't specifically listed, and I, and I generally do agree with the approach of not being so exhausted because then you always miss something, but does that mean if it's not specifically addressed, then it is, in fact, allowed because it's not otherwise prohibited? It's kind of a gray area, I think. In town council, like in 40A, is that what it is? Um, in did 40A, not find in 40A, there's nothing specific to that? No, I'll go back and look at my email yeah. with him about it, but I don't, I think that's what he, that's what where we landed on that, but I'll double check. It was a couple months ago. So, we did have so like an example, and I know, this is rookie, but I mean, clearly, you know, this, this yeah, adds yeah, yeah, yeah. tasting room. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. If, if a tasting room were proposed now, maybe that's not a good example because it involves alcohol. Would it be allowed now because Junk it's not yard. specifically prohibited? Junkyard. Right. Junkyard's already not Junk allowed. Yard. Because we specifically say that. Right. So I right. think, like, so this is what I think would happen. And I'll, so, I'll tell you why I'm asking. Hold on. Because as I go through this, and I grant this is my first first blush through this, I'm also thinking about, okay, what are we removing from describing and what are the implications for removing that category? That, that's also kind of yeah. great. So I think that there, if someone came in with um, a use that they couldn't like claim was substantially similar or make a good case, um, and that wasn't like in the bylaw somewhere, we would just say it's not really addressed and we just don't really have a process for it. I don't know that we could go as far as to say it's prohibited um, and then let them get counsel and come to us and figure out how they want to deal with it. But I will check on this because it's, it's a very good question. It's a very good point. But I do like the, I do like the if it's substantially the the statement about it, it being substantially similar or whatever that term is right because then to me we don't need to nail the definition like a hundred percent yeah it doesn't need to be exhaustive you know if uh, let's go with the tasting room right if someone if there becomes a thing where what's that kombucha yeah. Right? Is that what it is? A kombucha. Yeah, yeah. Right? Is that the, so if for some reason that becomes a thing and there's a, someone wants to come in with a kombucha tasting room, um, like, 
it, it, it's not listed in here, but that's pretty similar. I mean, it wouldn't fit in with right. the definition that you have here, right. but. But it could, like uh, that argument could be made, right? Right. right? right. Yeah. You know, the, the, yeah. The, the, the process and the, you know, the way things are happening on the site are sim similar enough to something else we already allow. Right. Right. Um, I think it's really hard to think of all the things we don't want and put them in here and say prohibited. So we might want to consider adding uh, adding that language about if it's not expressly permitted, it's prohibited, unless it can be proven that it's substantially similar. I don't know. Um, Maybe that only happens in, let's say, the residential districts, right? So um, could we have a line in the residential district that said, um, if it's not listed here, it's not a lot because really there's only so many things you want in a residential district anyway. <laughs> Whereas the commercial yeah. districts yes. we want we want to sort of create we, some growth. We do want it open and allow yeah. some diversity right. Yeah. Right. in uses, right? Right. We're more uh, more likely to look at somebody coming in and saying, Well this is substantially similar to a restaurant. It kind of walks like a duck, you know, acts like a duck kind of thing. It's it's almost a restaurant or it's almost a bar. And we can right. understand what that really is. We wouldn't want that in residential, so we really just want residential and residential for the most part. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. think that in, in the commercial things? districts is where we're mo more likely to get things that we haven't like seen before that we. Uh, I just know don't. How to fit developers in. are notoriously untrustworthy. So, um, if you leave them a little gap, they'll find it and they'll try to do that. So, right? do, are you saying we should have that language? Uh, I'm just asking if we can have that language. So can we have a mix of languages where, uh, I guess initially I thought that if, uh, I thought that our bylaw said that if it's not in here, you can't do it. But, I haven't found that. That's okay, fine. Look, yeah. That's good. That that's okay. Here. Yeah. So now I'm asking, can we have uh, some of that language in some areas or does that have to be a wholesale thing? I mean, we... Okay. I think that's a question for town council. Yeah. Because I would agree, I would agree with you, Nick, that, um, that you know, for residential, we can be, I think we can be pretty exhaustive of like, these are the, um, you know, the six things we want to allow, period. Yeah. But do we have to say that? Because. Well, if right? you're telling like, me that nowhere in the code does it say you can't do what it doesn't say you can't do. No, but I'm not saying like. Like if we allow it in business, that means we have to allow it in residential. Or if we're silent on it, it means we have to allow it anywhere. Like those, you know. Like well, I think what, is in your basement. Well, I think what Nick is asking is what? if you know. So in residential, we could probably sit around and envision the things that we want to allow pretty easily. And so, in, in just in that section, could we yeah. say anything that's not addressed is not? Because I, I also think I about get that uses. Saying that. I'm not sure it's necessary. Is my point. Okay. Yes, especially, as as we can ask and we can do it. Yeah. But I'm yeah. just saying, like, especially in the residential areas, like, because I think really where we're where we're likely to get uses we either don't want or don't know how to deal with, are in other. Well, here you have short term the Airbnb short term but, rental is a perfect example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. We yeah. we uh, right now we right we have no idea how that's controlled if it is or if it should be, right. Um, that's not a use that anyone contemplated five years ago. Well, what I'm dating, right? Ten Whatever years, it was, ten years, ten years ago. ago. <laughs> ten years ago. Um, I'm. Uh, so if we had that language today, if it's not expressly permitted, it's prohibited, yeah. and someone wanted to do an Airbnb, and we decided we're okay with it. Well, then we'd have then, to make a right. specific, conscious effort to say. Yes, we're allowing it, or no, we're not allowing these things. Right, and that's and right now we haven't. Right, that's we right. We just sort of it's happened, and right. we let it go. I'm thinking I'd like to see some, um, you know, not not necessarily exhaustive, but some decent examples of how other towns do that. Because I, in my mind, I do think, all right, you know, as time goes on, it could help us in especially say residential areas. People, you know, hopefully people are creative with how they're they're using land, and as people get creative and opportunities come along, I think it's much easier to say definitively, okay, this new use, yes, we are going to allow it, and try to catch up with something that people just start doing, and then we realize it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're yeah. we are kind of trying to get there right now, yeah, yeah. like modernizing a little bit, yeah. like a little bit of catch up. I mean, 
I'm open to yeah. whatever you guys want to do. And we put short-term rental in there as something that we know needs to be addressed. Um, I did a lot of research on it. I don't know if I brought it or ever gave it to you guys. Um, and I put a placeholder on that so we can talk about that at a future meeting, but it's it's in there. Um, and I know you're trying to get us to focus on business and industrial, but it's just, it's an interesting thing to think about. Okay, no, uses they're, they're allowed by right if they're not. And well, I didn't want to the Olympics was going question. to be in Massachusetts, people would be subletting their places just to allow gouge, price gouging. It was just for that reason alone. They'll go off someplace in New Hampshire and you'll let somebody else rent their place so they can get to the Olympics. It's a short term life. But I'm not sure we necessarily want to. I mean, it may not be if it's less than 14 days. Um, there's a lot of regulations around that. We have some taxes in place in town that make it easier for us to actually incorporate short-term rentals that are already happening into that. So um, I did do a bunch of research a few months ago. I'll provide to you guys. Um, interesting to have. I guess it's a conversation that we should have is do we yeah. want to allow that or not? And, and if, if we do allow it, there is a revenue stream that can be generated from it. And so if that you, there, and if you it, can regulate it. it I guess in... If, if you can even monitor it. You can't. Short-term rentals can definitely be regulated. I, I think, I, I guess, on that particular item, I, I have a feeling that's a discussion that's greater than this board. Oh, yeah. It is. I that's think that's, exactly a, right. that's a select board. Um, it actually came up during a CBDC meeting. I mean, discussion. Mm -hmm. There was a CBA hearing on a, on a um, accessory apartment across the street from me, actually. Um, and the neighbor was concerned about it being used as a short-term rental, as an Airbnb. I guess the CBA really didn't want to address it in that particular hearing, but the question kept coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unfortunately, what the neighbor agreed to set it up so that it would be more amenable to a short-term <laughs> <laughs> rental than an accessory apartment. So, people do need to talk about that. And we can honestly, like, we can take that out of this go around if it's going to be too much of a separate conversation and we can figure that out as we go along. Are we doing some kind of a zoning workshop? So we have canceled the zoning workshop for March 30th just in light of like not having too many lots. gatherings. Gatherings, right. Large gatherings of people. And is that the reason? That is the reason. So. Okay. But that doesn't mean like if everything blows over we can maybe do it in May or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of what's going on. It's not an official town policy, but it's something we decided in our department a few days, a week ago. Okay, so, all right. I didn't mean to derail everything with no, the discussion. Okay. Just let's have, a, let's have a plan in place for how we understand how things are prohibited and allowed. Yep. I think, yeah, I think that's a good point. point. Definitely. Um, and then also in the definitions, um, as we go through them, um, I guess I think that we need to think about um, not just is one thing called another, but it, it, do we need and do we need to have the def the um, two different definitions for things that are similar, or can we can we get rid of can we sort of merge them together? Um, in view of not that they might be two different things, but in view of they they um, they might generally have the same externalities, right? That same impacts on the community. And so, if they do, then why should they? Go what, to yeah, what, why do we need to agonize over having two different? Things? Do you have an example? Uh, I think when we get into food, mm -hmm. um, that I think that's that's a one taverns. that yeah. yeah that's a one that jumped so like out at me. and biscuit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That more fast food and casual dining. Fast casual versus fast yeah. food. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So you think they're the same? Uh, yeah, I I think that the way that they're written here, you'd be hard to define one similar? versus the other, and I'm not sure what the what the difference is. What okay. do we care? Yeah. So. Right. Maybe we don't need it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's certainly. 
right? That's a perfect example. There is certainly a difference between what one would consider fast food and some some fast casual, but in terms of their impact to a neighborhood or to Reading, what's 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 the difference? If it's the if it's the drive through, then the drive -thru, then right? let's yeah. talk about the drive through, like right? Drive -thru. I was already yeah. Saying drive -thru. If it's the drive through, yeah. then let's talk about the drive through. But yeah. um, it's not but, just the drive through, though. It's the sort of it's the amount of time someone might spend at a facility, so that there's this kind of more traffic. Right? So the drive through generates its own problems. But if it's a pull in, it takes four minutes to get your meal, pull out, and then someone else takes that spot. That's a lot of cars moving in and out, as opposed to someone sitting down for an hour. And eating, right? Like well, let's get into it about like what fast casual is. Well, <laughs> well, we on, on the on agenda. <laughs> or to say Wendy's picking like two Johnson. different what? ones that are not in town. Going through the definitions, yeah. like that's fine. Say, I'm sorry, say that again. That's Panera versus, versus Wendy's. Oh really? Yeah, Panera is yeah. a well. The, right. The interesting thing is Dunkin' Donuts. All right. Restaurant common. Not Dunkin' Donuts in the world of today, where there's a Dunkin' on every exactly. corner. But take go back ten years, right? When wow. they're they were a little bit isolated, more isolated, and every Dunkin' Donuts that you pass by, there would be you know a line of cars out front, right? So certainly an impact. They have they have seating, so you can't. You know, some of them do, some of them don't. I mean, so there's this like, how do you define, how do you define Dunkin' Donuts, right? It, you can't do it by seats. Um, you, you, what's the difference between Dunkin' Donuts and um, uh, the pizza place, Pizza World? What's the difference then between Pizza World and Panera, and you start to like, there's no dividing line ever. The, but the real impact is the number of trips it generates. Yeah. But a busy Panera would generate the same as a, as a non-busy Dunkin' Donuts. What's the black box? Though? What about um, yeah, traffic number um, saying? Sorry, saying. Um, no, but you can't rely on that because no, you I just, just want to no, understand no, no. what someone had thought. Someone had thought about that or done Someone had thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. There is some difference there. Yeah. What were you saying? The traffic generating numbers from... Uh, from ITE. ITE, yeah. They separate but these? They distinguish they do. those two yeah, things? Yeah, they do. Like huh. um, because of the drive through nature of one No, of because of what Nick was yeah. talking about, the traffic the generating. How, uh, how fast it takes you to get. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Thought you came up with that on your own. No, I call it the black box because <laughs> it, you know, somehow somebody generated these numbers based on some kind of study. And right. sometimes there's no impact. You know, oftentimes someone will come here and say, "Well, I'm concerned about that development creating new numbers." And it's you know, it's three houses in a neighborhood of you know, 35 houses. It's, there's no, you don't see the impact. April Street, right? A couple of houses on April Street. You're not going to understand what that house is doing, yeah. really. But if the ITE is saying that there's some difference there that we should at least see what that difference is and then see, see it whether it's yeah, yeah, see whether it's really look at all aspects of yep. whether the definition is different really. Yeah, I read these two definitions and I don't I don't know how you could even I can't believe that council said we could put these in there. You did. They haven't looked at this yet. No, but this other one is in here. Food, uh, the fast restaurant, food. restaurant fast food. food. He might not have been around when that was put in. Well, any town council. Yeah. <laughs> Did town council always review the zoning? Um, yeah, yeah, don't they? yeah. I'm just yeah. questioning everything. <laughs> I mean, a short, <laughs> it may have been put in front of a town council. Ask everything. an attorney what this means. Short waiting time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's way too subjective. Yeah. Yes. We know what it is, right? We, we know yep. what fast food restaurant. So, so you see, you're, you see how this this like balloons, yes. right? Yes. So are we gonna mess with things like that? I mean, should we fix that definition? Should we combine fast food and fast casual together into one new great bigger definition? I mean, um, well, I guess that goes back to that's that's why I said, do we care the difference between fast food and fast casual on its impact? In Reading. Well, so I think that 
I think that while we might want or, or encourage fast casual, like in our downtown, and some of the spaces that are the commercial spaces, like it maybe would be nice to have a Poloco or a Chipotle that mm -hmm. we could walk to. Mm -hmm. We might not want to encourage like another Burger King or Wendy's or something like that in our downtown. And that has to do with kind of the chain nature. I mean, that's has to but do with the land different. use, no. the, yeah, the, yeah, lands, the parcel I guess, size as well. I guess how do you encourage Chipotle but not not McDonald's. I'm having separate definitions for them. Much better. And they're allowed in different zones. <laughs> what, no, but they're the same thing. And no in fact, way. Chipotle used to be owned by McDonald's. Really? Yes. Well, I think Wendy's owns uh, Qdoba. Okay. Like that, or... So they're both, I mean, in terms of a definition and their impact, it's they're the same. I don't disagree that I don't, don't necessarily want McDonald's, but right, sort of take that out of it. Yeah, if you and watch, if you look at the Chipotle over it, and uh, so no snobby zone. You can watch the traffic. <laughs> <stuff. laughs> <Yeah. more> <laughs> like we could talk about, you know, how they source their ingredients and stuff like that. No, <laughs> then you can really separate really, the two. But the impact. I mean, if it's food, it's food, right? So there's the same odor impact. Let's say it's yeah. the same trash impact. Mm -hmm. So the traffic impact is the biggest piece. How much parking do they need? How many cars are we going to see? Chipotle and McDonald's both. Well, not this McDonald's. <laughs> Chipotle and an active McDonald's probably have the same amount of cars moving in and out of there. Right. Yeah, because otherwise the way you control impacts is through elements of kind of required design. Like, you know, I think yeah. McDonald's is like, you know, it's the, it's the big sign, it's the, yeah, the and that's a, that's a whole other realm. And that's, you know, right, yeah. right. The formula yeah. business factor. Of yes. It. Mm -hmm. And we could right. control that yes. to some degree. Yes. Yeah. Well, they've, they've sort of yeah. come around a little bit with their kind of parts, right? If you look at yeah. some of the more progressive areas, like in Cambridge and stuff, the McDonald's don't, doesn't look like this one anymore. Yeah. <laughs> But some of them do much better design. So that's what we'll do. We'll just say you can't have a restaurant unless it's high design. <laughs> <laughs> well, design guidelines. We control it, we well, control I think it by there's design some stuff guidelines, and guidelines and the guidelines. requirements yeah. rather than the type of restaurant they are. Yeah. I mean, if they come in as part of a development done under 40R, then they need to comply with the design guidelines. Um, all right, point taken, I think. <laughs> Do you want to just go through this? I feel like yeah. we should start at the top. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If that's Sorry. possible. I mean, no. it's, all yeah. it's all intertwined. And so some of the things we tried to group together, like Andrew smartly put up like restaurant comma fast food, so that they're oh, all so listed that, together. Yes. So at least for this conversation, whether we leave them that way or not, we can compare them to each other. Fantastic. Right. So. Um, we start with. Drinking establishments, <laughs> bar, tavern, brewery, distillery, winery, yeah. and tasting room, yeah. or with, right. with or without tasting room. Yep. So I guess just to start off, I have a question for those of you who have lived in town and been with, working with the CPDC longer than I have. Um, do you know why we say bar, or tavern, and then say it's not allowed anywhere? <clears throat> because it used to not be. Because but what about sure it? Food being yes. Okay. So it is yes. the food thing. That's what I thought, yeah. but it doesn't yeah. say that anywhere. So I, I wouldn't. I because uh, we don't regulate how you get your license, right? Well, it doesn't say that we don't allow it because it doesn't have food, right? It, in the definition, there's nothing mentioned about. Yeah, it just says that the principal uses on -site right consumption. Alcohol. Right, and so it's vague. Yeah. So, but that's we were assuming that that was the reason yeah. when we did all the definitions related to. Um, drinking and eating establishments. Uh, yeah, whenever it something wouldn't. came in, whenever something came in, like a restaurant, uh, and it had a bar feature as well, there was uh, there was always a discussion about how many seats they had at the bar versus how yes. many seats. Okay, all right. And is that a requirement anywhere else in the town laws, or is it all just through this? Uh, it's a good question. Of the we're like, not definitely the only. We're definitely not the only town that has that kind of requirement. Oh, I know we're not the only yeah. town. I'm just wondering: is that yeah? yeah. Is that is um, that controlled I, by any other? Yes. So system? I think the I th so it's it's controlled by the liquor licenses, um, and I think that um, that was really that's really how it came into here is that um, the board of selectmen wouldn't issue a liquor license. If, it, if there wasn't food with it also, or if it wasn't a club. 
and those were sort of the two. Um, yeah. And I, things have changed to some degree. I'll have to check but on that. You might want to check that. That's still yeah. Yeah. the board of the that. select board that is, is the body that issues liquor license. I was, I'm just curious. Yes. Yes. I'm just curious yes. about how then what we what we do here relates to. Right, so if we approved, right, if we yeah. approved uh, a bar or tavern, and then um, they went to the select board <laughs> and could never get a liquor license for it, then you know what have we done? Right, 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 right. right. Okay, I'll check on that. That's what I'm thinking. Um, <clears throat> right. If a bar or tavern came here for a site plan, they would have to have a, a license in hand. There would have to be one available that was being offered to them by the select board. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to approve it, just like we couldn't approve that home occupation when the guy wasn't living in the building, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so knowing that, um, yeah, we kind of tried to re rework the definitions. Um, so you want to delete bar, tavern, and just put into the drinking? Well, so I just point? feel like the terms are, don't really mean anything mm -hmm. unless you clearly state that the reason it's not allowed is because there's no food. Like, because, uh, like, you know, yeah. we have a place in Davis Square called The Saloon, which traditionally didn't have food, right? And it was, could be in the list with bar and tavern, but it's, like, more of a restaurant, to be honest, than, like, so it's... I think saloon used to be on this list. Yeah, it, it did, I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like, so the terms I feel like are just a little fungible. Um, and so we tried to make it more clear um, with like drinking establishment without food. No, 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 not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and then by adding drinking establishment with food and then listing there like some of the different words that can be used for that. But and then having another definition for brewery, distillery, and winery um, to distinguish that use is actually something quite different than a bar, tower, and saloon use um, because of the different permits that are required from the state and you know the fact that it's produced on site and that there's a manufacturing component to it and there's a lot more baked into that. Andrew actually did all the research, so I should probably let him talk. <laughs> um, Um, I, I, I like this approach um, because I agree that I think that, you know, water tavern, I mean, it, gets, it cuts to the chase, right? What, I guess the, the thing that I question here on is the um, complete meals. I mean, so how do you define, how do you how define, define how do you define meals. without food? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because, right, even every... Right. Every ratty little bar serves as food. something. Right, yeah, we and we talked about that when we were let's see. Um are you're looking at the definition of drinking establishment with food. I think we were just or trying to get food. away from like a bowl of peanuts on the bar is enough to count. Right. right. Do, right. We know, do we know if the licensing language, if so the victualler's language, whatever let, they use? Let me look at that. Look Let's look at that. And yeah. I'm thinking of language like full menus. Compared, I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I don't know what the what the right legal terms are, but there must be definitions around that. Yeah, like terms, so. terms Whatever the select terms. board uses to make a decision. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Is there a yeah, separate category for a liquor store? I don't see one. So liquor that would store. probably go under um, retail and consumer, maybe. Like a retail store. Um, those are separated mm -hmm. under Mass General Law. That that's a whole different right. permit right. Um, packaging and selling for right. off-site consumption. Right, you're going to have blurred lines when you have uh, the brewery, distillery, winery, and tasting room because those are also sales facilities. Right, they do sell by the bottle, and that's allowed in the definition that they could sell by the bottle. So breweries, wineries, and distilleries are prohibited to selling only the product built on site. You can't sell a Bud Light at a Notch Brewing Company um, by the bottle or you can, you can only sell like that specific brew. 
That's usually not what the breweries and tasting rooms do. Right. Well, because the Mass General Law Chapter 138 specifies that they can only sell products that they make on site. Yep. So under their farmer brewer permit. Okay. Yeah. So there are a lot of regulations at the state level about them. Um, and that's why they don't creep into being over town. Right. right. So they are like distinct. Yeah. So how do how do we um, do we think that this use would be allowed by our liquor licensing regulations? I will have to do a lot of looking into the liquor license. You guys are asking really good questions. Um, yeah, we should look into that. Yeah. Because these are these are That's great like little. the number one thing we should do. Little one opened up in like York, Maine, and it's just. A, oh, say it again. Uh, sorry. Uh, these are nice little establishments. You know, they don't. Yeah. They're not like the rowdy bar and saloon type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Typically, they're not small buildings. Uh, they're yeah. brewing they that much. Be. Yeah, they, they can, can be. No, they can be. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, especially uh, if it's a distillery or a. I'd say yeah. the one in York, Maine, is about forty by forty. It's the old. Um, police station, I think, or the old information station on the corner there. It's pretty small. You can do a really small batch. Even in Giles okay. and Salem, it's, it's fairly small. Yeah. <laughs> so our economic development director actually knows quite a bit about this because she helped permit some of the breweries in Salem. And so we can have her back for your next conversation for more oh, clarification. I, uh, you know, I, I, I do think it's, I mean, we ought to allow it. It's one of those things that, um, or at least have the discussion whether the town wants to allow it because it is right. one of those sort of economic development, um, you know, sort of drivers. drivers yeah. And is it my imagination, or is this one of the uses that were, there was a survey that was done where people said, "What kind of thing?" It's not your it? imagination. You're this thinking is, of reimagine ready. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this was a use that was expressed as something that people would like. To say. <laughs> I may, I may have fed into that a little bit. <laughs> there was no conspiracy going on. <laughs> The, do you remember off the top of your head what the percentage of respondents? I want to say 60% yes. of respondents. It was pretty high. Or, like yeah. We had a lot of positive feedback about the brewery distillery use. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And to Tony's point, when they get larger, and especially the distilleries with the, um, with the alcohol, uh, the building code is pretty strict about you know what the requirements are for when you're storing those kind of barrels and aging things. And so those, those could only go in certain places in town, really, because they need space industrial type space. And that's what I'm thinking, if we're pursuing this, just to, it'd be, it'd be terrible to have maybe somebody come in and want to do this and then be hung up by another rule in the town. And so if we're doing this, then and we, and we need to be working with anybody else in town to open the door to that. That's an issue. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right, Julie. You said you're going to sort of, yeah. you're going to look at the liquor license mm -hmm. rules. So at least we understand that if they... Yeah, believe me, I'm not standing up a town meeting talking about this if we haven't like <laughs> figured out whether we can do it or not <laughs> um, no yeah so that's that's good that's good feedback we'll do that but you generally are okay with like the way we've broken it down so this brewery is totally winery so we think it would be very rare that you would see one without a tasting room, but in case there was one without one that was focused solely on wholesale and manufacturing. Yep. I know we're only looking at definitions now, but in the use table we put that under a different category and only really allowed in the industrial areas, that if they're not going to have a tasting room you wouldn't be downtown. Under what? Manufacturing? Under light, light manufacturing, yeah. I believe. Um, light industry, yeah. There's it's the first. Um, Which is it? In the use table, in the use table, which you're not looking at right now. No. There's a category for light industry where we have brewery, distillery, or winery without tasting room. Yeah, and that would fit. Okay, so why? Um, why does that not get a definition? I guess we're drinking yes. establishment. It does have a definition. Right after tasting room. All right, after tasting room. So now it's tasting room. So well, no, they're just sub. Page three of the definitions yeah, at the top, far. Nick. Okay. There are two categories: brewery, distillery, with a tasting room, and one without. Right. Just like that. Page three of the under. Oh, we think that's a subcategory, huh? Okay. Yeah, I've seen it both ways. Um, 
just in general, do we think we need to have definitions that reference back to other definitions? So, for example, um, restaurants, right? They're not under fast food. Either restaurant, fast food, not fast food, restaurant. Well, as long as it matches what we have in the use table, it means. Um, I don't know if that's what we did here. But that would be our intention, is to have it match. Yeah, like yeah so it's not how we d what we did here, but we would fix it to make it match. Like, so we'd say restaurant combo. So it matches what's yeah. in that. And I like yeah, the no one place your restaurant. What type of restaurant? Break it down that way, so somebody's not searching all throughout it, trying to find the one area that it, the 14 different little locations. Yeah, because it is easy to miss things in our definitions currently. Right. Because they're not broken that, up that way. Like tonight, we should focus on getting general feedback from you guys about like the direction we're headed mm -hmm. and the things we've done here, and, and uh, things you want us to research for next time. Um, what would you say your goals are? Are you going to have like a when you do your presentation at town meeting, you're going to have your bullet list of goals for this modification, right? For this yeah. massive modification. Right. So what is? What are your so there are a few things going on here. Um, the big one, I would say, is having in the use table more use categories so that the threshold for site plan review is triggered when, you know, a commercial space switches from one tenant to another that's in a different use category that may have different externalities, right? So it's basically more control for you guys. And then secondly, um, consolidating the uses and the definitions where necessary, and then also expanding on them by saying including but not limited to and adding some things so people have an idea of what we're talking about in the definitions. Right now, I think you can look at the definitions and have no idea what we're talking about, um, which makes it challenging from on our end as well as as an applicant. Um, and then the third thing I would say is modernizing it by adding in some uses that we want to catch up, I guess, <laughs> to other towns in the area to make ourselves more competitive. Um, yeah, and maybe also to open ourselves up to uses that people expressed in Reimagine Reddit. Right, that's right. So it's not just, we're not just catching up with other towns, but catching up with what, what we're hearing. have said, yes. we want to have in town. That's right. right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, that's right. Did you, are there any other things you can, any other reasons or things? Uh, Consolidating. We use all those big words. <laughs> <laughs> Sound good. And you're simplifying the process for when a the um, space is changing ownership, but the use remains the same, or substantially similar. Cutting down on red tape. Tell me, he loves those phrases. <laughs> Do they? More control for you guys, but less red tape. I wouldn't say it that way. Not more control for you guys. I'd say the town has, I don't know, more say in how something. I said you guys, like talking about something. I know, I know. Yeah. Oh, you watched the town meeting. No, no, I meant you. <laughs> From a site plan review standpoint. So here's a question. I know we're not supposed to be looking at these tables, but I, uh, I, I, pa I paused on the creative arts definition. Which I, I love the creative arts is called out. The which definition? Creative arts definition. Okay. Um, and I, I, I just generally love the creative arts is called out. Maybe it's this you know, the mental category of, well, sure, there's no prohibition on it, so it can come in anyhow, but it kind of calls out for what the town would like to see. But then I look at, and I should say, and then I look at the use table where under retail and consumer there's creative arts and it's allowed in every single business and industrial district, which is great because I was thinking, oh, would that affect me? And so if it's allowed everywhere, do we need to define it? I'm just, 
So, okay, that's a good question. I'm just, I'm just curious about, yeah. about the thought process there. Of, okay, here's the definition. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a really good definition. In my mind, I looked at this and I thought, oh, does that affect you? And I say, creative arts across the street, um, across the parking lot. And no, it doesn't because it's allowed everywhere. But is there is there anything we need to be thinking about along those lines in terms of having a streamlined bylaw? So I think that um, the definition, it captures a lot, right? The definition is a lot. It, yeah. It captures a lot, but it's nice for if someone comes in and they have an idea that fits into this category, we can say, yeah, we've thought about that, and we think that it would be in the creative arts category, which is in, or in the creative arts definition, which is in this category, but because the prior use of that building was automotive, you're switching from automotive to creative arts, and which creative arts is allowed, but we have a site plan review process so that we can make sure that we understand what it is we're doing there, what the potential externalities might be. Um, you know, and, and let the neighborhood know that it's proposed. Right. That's a really good answer. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So Which that maybe would be different than this makerspace yeah. thing that you're just sort of yeah. just confusing. Well, going back to creative arts for just two seconds, it's allowed in every in business and industrial. It is not listed as being allowed in residential. Right. We're only looking at the business and industrial. Right, yeah. No, we're looking at all of it. Right. But my point is that you have to have it if you're going to prohibit it in the residential. Otherwise, well, it's not listed anywhere. It's allowed everywhere. Okay. So that if someone wanted to put a mural on a building that's in the smart growth district that faces abutters who are in residences, they still have to go through the abutter. Well, the mural is a mural. A mural would be the mural oh, right. is not the use. It would be an original art display, probably. Right. Yeah, signed by law. It would be allowed by law. I would. Uh, well, we would. We yeah. would look at it through the lens of the sign by law, and see how it fits into there. You mean if the creative arts user, if the if the um, it's not for advertising purposes or anything we're like that. We're talking about the artwork related to this use. We're not, we're not talking about the definition of this use. Is that what you're asking? Well, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because one of the properties in the Smart Growth District that I'm here now, someone wanted to put a, a mural of the town. I do. And the neighbors went through but that's not the use, right? So that's different, that's right? Definition so this is about the use of the property. A, a mural goes back to the sign by mentioning to the okay. printer. Uh, sure. And Good. yeah, so and on it's sort of right. That's different. It's not advertising. It was hard to define. Right. Uh, in the past, the general rule has been if somebody opened up this creative art store and they did a lot of random, different things, pottery and painting and all of that, right. and somebody wanted to put a mural on that wall, they wouldn't let them put a mural that described what was going on in the space. Is that signage? Right. So the, the old butcher shop had a fish market kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stupidest rule I think we ever had in place, <laughs> really. Because I think we could have, I think we can, I think we can easily work out whether it's a sign or some piece of art. And even if it were an artwork of a butcher shop, as long as it didn't say Joe's Butcher Shop on it, what would be wrong with that? You know, so, so again, creative arts thing, if they want to put a mural up, that would all... Original be. art display, I would say. Yeah. And we would assess whether it's like really a sign promoting right. business or whether it's really just art and um, right. go from there. Okay. I thought I picked an easy one to ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> there are no easy ones. <laughs> so we saw the difference between creative arts and makerspace as makerspace being a little more technological with the 3D printing and more. The definition definitely needs work. I tried to piece it together from a few different areas. Um, and we could remove things like art supplies that are mentioned in there, but I was thinking pottery is creative arts where maker space is a 3D printing. Sewing machines and quilting and things right. like that. Right. So, so we machines. could limit that definition. Further. So is this like, like joint workshop space? Yeah. Is what maker space is? Mm -hmm. It's really like a group that gets together and they all do it. 
it can be small groups or individuals all in the same area yeah. sharing technology and tools to build. Yeah, so there's a there's a there are spaces that do that for all kinds of things from from laboratories actually mm -hmm. for startups, you know, that they don't have the money to buy kind of equipment that's in a lab. Mm -hmm. and so, like you share an office, there's labs. Same thing with more industrial stuff, so mm -hmm. metalworking and uh, woodworking. Mm -hmm. That way, these startups don't have to buy those lathes and big pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, so, somebody wants to start a furniture making shop, wouldn't necessarily have to buy all that to be shared. So, would you recommend just removing some of the smaller items from the makerspace definition, like sewing machines and I don't know, I, mean, I, I, I see where you're trying to go with it, and we should just keep working on it until we figure out. I think, and I think it's even used in um, basically like the food production industry. Like if you're, isn't it? So I mean, like if if you're starting up, say new cookies, um, there there there's shared kitchen space for mm -hmm. people who want to do that. Mm -hmm. and so that also fits in kind of what we're thinking of this concept of makerspace. Not necessarily high tech, but just shared space. I think there's two key things about makerspace that we saw as being a little bit different than creative arts, where um, makerspace may require like a larger footprint to accommodate the lab equipment or the CNC router or the big um, industrial kitchen or whatever it's going to be, and yeah. may have like. Uh, more noise, more heavy equipment, more um, deliveries, things like that, right? Whereas creative arts, I kind of kind of feels like a little more like the the quilting club or the. So, um, what the end game is the makerspace? The end product is a commercial product that you can market. I don't know. You sell, or is that just like I'm making this big steel sculpture in my backyard, as opposed to creative arts, where I'm, people go there to learn how to paint or. or the, the difference that I hear you talking about, though, really is that the makerspace w w would require trucks, right? I mean, that's or a it difference. Might be, it might be noisier. It no, might be yeah, more like industrial. A bigger yeah, floor more plate. industrial. It would, um, would require. Yeah, either. I think the key between a makerspace and what you're talking about is uh, automation. Makerspace, you can use lathes, you can create product, mm -hmm. but you shouldn't be having it in some sort of automated facility where you're stamping out 10,000 widgets an hour. But in terms of externalities to the community, right? Yeah. right the difference between the sewing, the, you know, the Let's sewing, say the sewing right. for example, uh, small production, but it could be smelling. No, the difference between we right between we sewing. We have one of those. What? We do. We have a Reading based leather company. Yeah, they make these great wallets and riveted things. And, right, oh. the, there's a thing down the street of the next to Combos, the yeah, women the quilting that place. the yeah. quilting place. Yeah. They're great. Right? That's great. To me, Talk that's to a great. He gets out of the office. <laughs> that's a, I mean, I walk, whenever I go by there, there's a number of women yeah, they quilting do and doing they stuff. Do they do all so sorts of stuff. So that's actually a good idea. So that would be Yeah, like sewing can yes. be one thing in creative arts. It can also be rather industrial if you're trying to figure out how Sculptures to make the newest, lightest tent. In, in, <laughs> right, yeah. And so the difference to me in is that is really, so they, right, they, they come in with their sewing bags, right? Or their quilting bags, right? Versus, to me, a makerspace is, is someone, right, making, let's use a tent example. Yeah. Someone gets big rolls of canvas, of canvas or nylon. whatever, nylon delivered so that they can figure out how to make the yeah. good sleeping bag yeah. um, with an automated. Yeah, and it might yeah. require, like, and, and, I'm just thinking, like, shared, really expensive equipment. Yeah, so to yeah. me, that's the difference is is that sort of in and out process, you know, what gets, you know, heavy deliveries, heavy equipment and heavy deliveries um, in a maker space where the creative arts is um, more, yeah. Or not. I'm just trying to think yeah. about like, what's, why would you, why would you okay one in one place and, and not the other? Yeah. That's really the only thing that I question. think of. All goes back to traffic. A lot of it. Do well, this goes back to noise too. It could be yeah. noise, yeah. noise. Yeah. Yeah. safety aspects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and even the hours. It could go back to the hours <laughs> also, um, like early morning hours versus I don't know. So Kelvin's we had it like in our proposed table. We put it under science and technology, but it could just as easily go under light industry, um, depending on how we're viewing it. Yeah. 
I mean, now they've got like like lab space. You know, you've got experiments running overnight, and sometimes you have to go down. And yeah, it, 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 the traffic and hours is probably the thing. So the uh, right part of the question is: Are they both the same thing, and would we allow them in the same sort so we, of? So would what we, we do with it? Would you want to allow it in the same? One went from a creative arts to a to a maker space, as we were just talking about it. Would that be okay? They're not in the same they category. Mm -hmm. They're not in the same category. Well, right. We're, they could be. They could they be. Could, yeah, that's what I guess but that's really not important. because we were envisioning them as, as having different externalities yeah. and being a different scale. Right. So, I mean, looking at the use table while you're looking at the definitions is helpful because you can, you can it, it does kind of shed some light into like what we were thinking about yeah. with these things. Um, so, I do think the, that definition of makerspace needs, yeah, needs a little work, but yeah. I think I, I think that it's good to have it in there personally. But again, I think we have to be specific with whether the end product from either of these is marketed okay. by those people anyway. But I mean, you could make, you could sew something in your sewing class and then put it on Etsy. You could, but you're not going to make 10,000 of them. But maybe you don't need to if you're just selling it on Etsy. No. So I don't, I don't know right. if it's so about selling it. ultimate end sales it's or end space, marketing. Because it, I Maybe think it's that, about moves it, that moves it from makerspace into manufacturing. Right? Right. If you're making even 2,000 yeah. uh, steel tables, that's a lot of trucks right. bringing in a lot of materials. Let's just say they're doing sculpture. Even so, you know, two sculptures, that's probably not a lot. So you're that's saying we should limit the end product for makerspace. You're not talking about creative arts. I thought you were just distinguishing makerspace from creative arts with that uh, well, comment. I want to understand if, if there is a difference like that between them. And if there isn't, if they both end up, if it's just my, if it's really for my own edification, right? I go there and I'm working with steel or I'm working with pottery or quilts. Mm -hmm. That's just for me, whether I sell that few products I make or not. And how many can I make in a year if I'm just really working in this little place? Right. As opposed to making furniture that I'm then putting up for sale, you know, hundreds of chairs a year, that's probably different than just right. you know, one-off chair. Yeah. And then, this may or may not have anything to do with externalities, I'm kind of jumping through hoops, hoops, but mental hoops, but the makerspace seems to be more associated with really specialized equipment. Um, Industrial kitchen equipment. You've got list here, 3D, you know, lab equipment, 3D printers. I don't, I don't know if that. I'm trying to, I'm trying to like do a check on. Okay, does that really matter in terms of externalities? Yeah, thinking about it, thinking, why would we, why would we have one in one zone and not in another? Because if I think their thinking the was that it was heavier industrial type equipment, which yeah. probably doesn't belong in the same place that a yeah. small creative arts place. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's really take the place the next difference. to Columbus. Yeah. Probably not that great. So <laughs> the, right. E even if you could fit it all in there, probably not the best right. space to have all those trucks. In also, there. HVAC. I mean, that's yeah. that's the other yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Energy use. Energy use. HVAC. Yeah. Yeah. yeah different materials, solvents, and gases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So going back to definitions. Yeah. Should we go back to uh, commercial back recreation? To the, but, yep, commercial Is recreation. Okay. So just so you all know, we had definitions for place of assembly and commercial recreation that were very limited. Um, and we also didn't, no, sorry, we had a definition for place of assembly and another, but not a definition for indoor recreation. Um, so what we've decided is that those three definitions were very similar, commercial amusements, indoor rec, and place of assembly, and we've combined them into these two commercial recreations, one being indoor and one being outdoor. The differences being one indoor being like a bowling alley versus outdoor like a mini golf course, which may or may not have different externalities. So. The other piece of that we should mention is um, we had place of assembly in the use table twice mm -hmm. and with different, allowed differently. Um, and 
building commissioner recommended we get rid of it altogether since assembly really gets at like a building code concern more than like a zoning in his opinion um so if you're having like assembly is a different is like a certain use under the building code and if you're having gatherings of people in that space like you have to have meet certain different building code requirements um and we didn't really have it very well defined anyway um and any of these uses could also be a place of assembly like if enough people are going there and so the issue is why are you assembly as opposed to where are you And I guess the one thing that I guess I want to make sure is still captured is something like a function hall or function space. But you do say you basically can have in the commercial indoor commercial recreation indoor use for social purposes also, which mm -hmm. probably gets added. Mm -hmm. And so that's something where it's like it's not expressly said, but if we felt it met that definition it, by the including but not limited to, we can squeeze that under there. I mean, we could add function hall I mean, to this could, list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like function space or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many people are creating spaces like that newly, but you know. Because we have civic or private club. Yeah, and that's there uh, too. Yeah, under recreational. It's, it's, that's limited to non-profit organizations, though. Which maybe we in a club as opposed to a place that you rent out for weddings or something. We spent a lot of time on that one. <laughs> Civic or private club. Do you know why you settled on it being a nonprofit? Yes. Um, there. Do you recall that? No, I don't recall any of them. Right. There, there was a uh, feeling there was a difference between um, a club like the. VFW. Yeah, VFW or Knights of Columbus or, and allowing that versus or, or or some other, you know, a club like that, then a uh, a club. Golf club. Yeah. Um, yeah, a golf club or yeah, so um, a little bit more open and, and that I think if you looked at the 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 places where they're allowed, I think that's where we ended up um, with some differences. Oh, there it is. Okay, so only allowed, civic or private clubs are only allowed in business A and business B, and then not anywhere else. Like right over here. So uh, I'm trying to remember this, this discussion, but did, um, did their liquor license allow them to serve liquor without food? Because they were nonprofits, you know, there's like this grandfather uh, and yeah. some of these clubs yeah. have been here for a yeah. while. That might be part of it. We should we can look at it again if you want to. But I mean, we can leave that definition alone. Yeah. It's fine because I think we cut we can cover like the for-profit organization function space under commercial recreation indoor, um, or under some other. My guess is it would be a really big discussion if that definition for um, for a civic or private club were opened up again. I'd just begin to leave it. Yeah. Which is why, right, there's the, the, the outcome of that whole discussion, I think, was this nonprofit philanthropic <laughs> institution or cultural facility, which is allowed everywhere with a special permit. So if you wanted to have a club in your neighborhood, do you remember this discussion that you were in the middle of this? If you wanted to, if there was a, uh, a, a club in your neighborhood that was the, a little clubhouse or whatever, or even the, like the pool building, right? Uh, you know, should that be allowed versus, you know, something that's more substantial? So there's two, so, but they're both, they both specify nonprofit. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes. And then there's also the community center. Oh yeah, the community center. The community that we don't have. Community center use. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. You know, sure. so I <laughs> senior center. No, this is a horrible <laughs> definition. Yeah. Which the one? Community thing? Community center. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Multi-purpose family center. Do we define family anywhere? You want to get into mm. that one? <laughs> no. 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 Not in this day and age. Oh. Yeah. Actually, we, family we actually is defined in our bylaws. Actually, yeah. hey. family is defined in our bylaws. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, this always becomes a question of like how much is too much and let's do what is just necessary. <laughs> right? um, I mean, you look at that definition, you could take out the word family and it would still work, right? Yep, that's right. Take out the word family. It's a community facility. We know what a community center is. We could probably work that definition. Yeah. So commercial, did we used to have a definition for theaters? You said it was under assembly? Um, I don't it was no. It's it's just, just, it was like amusements or something. There was commercial amusements. Right, I'm not sure if it was under that. Let me see. Let's see. No, how we define commercial like amusement is... Is kind of useful. Oh, it's under place of assembly. Under P? Yeah. Under P? Place of assembly? Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's, that's where I would go. <laughs> 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 that's why I couldn't find it. Yeah, so it is here, and then we had. All right, so all of that gets rolled into this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we just take away the whole assembly thing, which yeah. irks the building commissioner. And this actually includes banquet facilities, actually. So maybe. And what does um, have you actually looked at international build, uh, zoning code? Recently, did you look at look at what zoning code? International okay. zoning code. So the building code is based in Massachusetts, at least in most states, under the International Building Code, and they have a whole series of codes: building code, mechanical code, plumbing code, zoning code, maintenance code. So when we were working on a lot of these definitions, I would always look at the International Zoning Code just to see what their basis for some of the stuff was for definitions that were difficult. Did you find it to be like, like, did you agree with it more often than not? Uh, it's, it's really generalized because zoning gets very local, right? It's yeah, very parochial it and you need to really craft it. So they give you this right. sort of big umbrella to capture a bunch of things and then you're supposed to do all the work of it. All right. I'm we will uh, run all these through there. The building yeah. inspector has an issue with a, the word assembly in zoning, but zoning might ICC might not have an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll look at that. Interesting. Regardless, the building code captures it pretty well. It's a, one of the strict, more strict um, yeah, types of use. Yep. Andrew, what was your thinking behind adding in the long-term basis? So uh, we sat there, we didn't want something like a pop-up theater to be restricted if someone wanted to do a pop-up theater on the common. I don't think zoning would restrict that anyways, but we didn't really want to capture that because we don't want someone to go through a site plan or special permit process to do a limited event um, that could happen in town. Yeah, like it doesn't make sense to have someone do a 90-day special permit process for a 30-day use. I agree. Necessarily. Well, what about, I guess. Uh, necessarily. I guess, to me, the um, long-term basis is. Um, uh, <laughs> or I could see people um, using that as a way to establish something for. Oh, I'm going to be here for two years. It's not, you know, um, I guess the the bigger question is: Are there do we, uh, is there a process for someone to do something on a short-term basis? Anything. Um, so that, that may not require, you know, the, um, uh, so they don't need to go through site plan review or some revi um, some alternative review process. Right, so on um, public land, we have the civic function permit. Mm -hmm. um, so for like, um, what's that thing downtown called? 
Street Fair. Fall Street Fair, yeah. And for things, events that happen on the common with the, the so garden club sale. Allows them they have to for all of the food right. vendors. Mm -hmm. and all yeah, it's that. like inclusive, and it goes through the select board. It goes through the health department. We sit down. We all yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, for private property, that's it's a little more vague, I guess, um, how that works. And we did kind of talk about this, like yeah. would we want to, if if um, Dennis Properties decided they wanted to have like a electric vehicle car show or something in the lot at um, Market Basket, like would we really care? Would we want to tell them they had to get some kind of permit from us for that or? Well, didn't that happen at Home Depot? It probably has happened, yeah, right? I mean, like, no. do we need no, no, no. to know? I mean, didn't, wasn't there an issue at Home Depot? Tony, you would, <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you would have been tuned in, right? Wasn't there something that they wanted to do in the parking lot there? And Norman they came wanted in. to do something, Home Depot wanted to do something. Home Depot was having a run sale. Yeah. They, so they needed, they wanted to get a special permit for the outdoor storage and sale of the product. And Jordan's was going to do some sort of video game expo in their parking lot. Hmm. And they would come to the board for a permit. I don't even remember what the permit was for. Uh, I do recall that Which one, board? if not both, got canceled when they realized, you mean we can't drive stakes into the tarmac to hold down the tent? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, but you yes. Said we, let them, we let them just use ballast for right. those things. So... There is a process through the select board. It's actually in the use table, SPS, um, for, um, let me see what it's specifically called. Um, commercial amusements. It's like, like the select board has a permit where if you have like a virtual golf facility or you have a convenience store with Kino, they can charge per entertainment device. Um, and maybe like for something like a virtual gaming at Jordan's, like they, they would need to get that type of permit. And I, I don't, it's a little vague, I'm not sure. But I guess the question is, do you want to have like say well, something I see you like need that? To, you need to see that review because they don't always remember that they can't drive stakes through that clay, you know, to that cap. Right. So you need to remind them every single time. I think the Jordan's thing was they were going to pull up a trailer, like a big trailer that was outfitted out. And it was yeah. like a virtual experience. So yeah. which board were they coming to? Yeah, I believe it was CPDC. It was this board. Here. And yeah. it was under... Well, like the Home board. Depot came because they were doing, I don't know, they were doing some other stuff too. They wanted, oh, they was that they changed the sign and they, they were changing changed, their striping. They were changing they their a, striping. They had an outdoor they, storage plan because every year when they put out their plants for the plant sale, they are blocking well, no, fire that was a, that, and all that all came in at the same time because yeah. they had stuff everywhere, and right. then we had them cordon off. You paint off little areas. This yep. is where you can put your stuff. So I would like. When they do events where they put things outside for sale, they have certain parameters that have been defined by all of staff, including the fire department, mm -hmm. where they can put those things in the. No, front. no, that was when. That's when that happened. That's when that happened. That's yeah, when and that we, happened. we do. Yeah. I'm telling you, yes. we do still enforce yeah, yeah, yeah. that yes. like every single no, time. No, I see it. I see because they're nicely painted on there. And, yeah, I, and I, the fire yeah. department is all over that like a dog on a bone. Um, I did, guess, but that didn't relate to because what we're taking out is the commercial amusements that wasn't time specific and it was very broad, saying it was just recreation related products or services. I mean, so all that business didn't relate to this. Then I think most yeah. zoning is typically on a long term yeah, basis. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I guess yeah, and that's why I don't think that. we need long term basis. But it brings up the question of if there. Are if someone does want to come in for something that's short term, mm -hmm. whether it fits exactly with, you know, right, this is where I'll argue against myself, Julie, is that, you know, if someone wants to come in for um, and, and use a space that used that was a restaurant or was a, let's say it, it was a um, pharmacy mm -hmm. and they want to use it for two months to do a Halloween store. A Halloween store. Um, uh, it's a different use, maybe, or maybe not, or even if they want to do a little pop-up restaurant or something, right? That's clearly a different use. Is there a way that they can do that without having to go through, you know, full site plan review, um, but they can do it on, you know, use that for a temporary basis? I or think that's... House. 
I so, think that's something that we probably economic development wants to yeah. to yeah. to do when uh, not right this is a side this yeah. is definitely a side comment right. but maybe we should try and figure out a way so that we can mm -hmm. we can do that and still deal with all those sort of make sure that it's getting the review without it being too onerous yeah right uh, that's right there's a thing in the existing building code yeah back to ICC but, um, where every use is has a hazard category and so if you increase the hazard you trigger certain things right so if you go from if you go from a retail store to a from a drugstore to a paint store, right? You've increased the hazard. Or if you increase, if you go to a restaurant or a place yeah. of assembly, you've increased the hazard, and that triggers more requirements. So, an old building might be required to put in sprinklers or change the exits or do something else. That's if we the ICC some, or the ICC. That's involved. in the uh, ICC is like the big umbrella, right. International okay. Code Council, and they make the International Building Code. Yep. So. That kind of a table that listed, maybe it's based on these categories that you've come up with. If you could assign uh, an externality, a code to it, a number, one through four, whatever, you might be able to look at it and say, the Walmart is going to be a Halloween store for two months. There's no difference there. The restaurant's going to be a Halloween store. There, that's less, right? Or the Walmart's going to be a restaurant. Not the Walmart, sorry, Walgreens. the Walgreens. Yeah. It's going to be a restaurant that's an increase in this, in the impact. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that triggers it. It's not, that's not easy, I don't think, right. but it's, it's one way to do it, yeah. a little less subjective. I think it's worth looking at that. I'll look at it. Anything's on the table. So Julie, you're saying right now that there is a review by town staff when there's a temporary event. On, on town, on, on town, so on, on like a town owned road or the, on the common, or yeah. I didn't the know. Home Depot one must be part of their special firm. The Home Depot, right? like they have to comply with their outdoor storage plan, and if they right. don't, they get the fire department just shuts it down. So the farm stand thing that happens down near the depot. It, it hasn't happened actually since like the first year I worked here, I don't think, the farmer's market. It's just been two been. years. But if it. another farmer's market wanted to come, yeah. right. if they wanted to be so, on public that's land. That's technically so, public land. So actually, well, where was it happening by the depot? Was it on the um, um, platform? This side side, on the sidewalk, on the sidewalk area. So if it's on the sidewalk, then it is town land, right? right? Yeah. So we could do the civic function permit. The we sidewalk is town land. Yeah. Aren't sure. are all of the MBTA signs on the sidewalk? Actually, the town owns the sidewalk land underneath area. the platform. They do? Yeah. Okay. But well, we don't have any say on those signs. But I thought you were saying mm -hmm. about, is it the sidewalk? Yeah. <laughs> on the <laughs> side. Trying to find a way. Yeah. <laughs> on the side of the tracks, right in the front of the clock is. Yeah. yeah. the clock is. Yeah. And the Camille Anthony service clock is. So we will figure out a way to... We've talked about this internally, ways to accommodate events on private land and, and ways to streamline our process for events on public land. So we'll continue that conversation. Yeah, and, and frankly, I don't need to remind Home Depot and them that they can't put the stakes in if you guys can do it. You know, like I don't think it has to come to this board if it's something as simple as every year they put up a tent, you know, why does that have to come here? If they're going to comply with the rules you've already established for them, yeah. just make sure they're complying with it and give yeah. them their permit. And so, yeah. same thing with the, uh, the farmer's market. If we've established rules for that, then they can do that. They should never come here. Yep. That would be the goal, right? Right. right. Yeah. And the same thing then with this table where we can identify impact. If it's a two-month Halloween store, um, I guess the signage is the biggest piece, right, on something like that. Does that have to come here? Either? Safety, occupancy, I mean, if it's traffic. A, it could be fall under like a temporary sign, right? Yeah. Which we allow for, for yeah. just shy of two months. Yeah. I guess what I'm just trying to say is yeah. we've already established rules for it. Um, it doesn't always have to come here. We can streamline that process. Because we don't want to have a chilling effect on like people who want to do creative things yeah. and right. utilize the spaces yeah. downtown. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like it would be I don't know, I think it would be cool if 
Walgreens had a Halloween store for two months a year, it'd be something. <laughs> yeah, would be yeah, yeah, I'm thinking, is, is there something we can do that, j just like the other things, like the creative arts thing, that flags it as, hey, we're kind of a, an open community, these kind of things, without, without, without having a chilling effect. Right. So I think that would be something that we, a process we would have that's like outside of zoning and zoning. outside of like yes. a formal board yeah. process where you have to notify people and yeah. all yeah. that yada, 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 and it takes all this time and like no one's planning these things far enough in right. advance to accommodate that so that it's a yeah. rush on our end and yeah. all that stuff. <sighs> Some pop-up thing might take off and come from you. Yeah. Right. In, which, in which case, maybe the, at that point they go to uh, right. Right. Then you okay. have a few months worth of data to know really how it's working, anyways. So, yeah, and I'm just thinking, like, I don't want to make it hard for people to play like, music around, for instance. Okay. So, do we, oh, should we take. playing it on a baseball right. field. Well, yeah. why, well yeah, right. okay, never mind. Should we take another, out another long term or just define what we mean by long term? I think, I think we just take it out. Take it out, okay. I mean, at some point, you probably put in some sort of language that says, should a event permit be issued by the town or zoning doesn't, these rules will not apply if there is a event permit issued by the town. So when Dennis or Home Depot or whatever sets up, meets with staff, says, I want to run for a weekend. I want a country jamboree in the parking lot. Someone doesn't come and it's like, oh, the, you don't have the right use. Right. right. Zoning use. So just moving down the list, I did provide a definition for commercial parking facility, which we had in our table with no definition prior to, um, I believe it's allowed in all zone. I don't get. Um, I think it's different than parking. Just parking in general. Yeah, I mean, there's a commercial parking facility that was allowed by right in business B. Um, so we've proposed to change that to a special permit at least because that would probably have a big impact. Can you guys what, tell me? what category is that? Right now it's under automotive. Yeah. But we in your new table it's under he's looking at the new one. Is yeah. it still under automotive? Yep. Okay. Well, where's automotive? It's not uh, automotive. Bottom it of page on the bottom two it starts. Do you want this to be alphabetical? I don't know. You know how long it took me to find church in our <laughs> definition, by the way? <laughs> Why? Place of worship, no. Um, what do we call it? <laughs> Exempt religious. <laughs> I looked up religious, no. Church, no. Place of worship, no. Exempt. So if you don't know that they're exempt, you wouldn't know. Okay, so we should change it to like religious or educational use, comma, other. I don't religious know. Or, yeah, no. It's hard to find. No, it's good. Well, we can look at that. That's, that's a good. Um, the definition of commercial parking facility. I... I, I've read it like six times and I can't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> the new one or the old one? The new one. There was no old one. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad to hear that because I read it and I went, oh, God, I was like, wait, did I understand that? <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah. Yeah. To make so, sure it was I, Without going in. Right. <laughs> it's like a very long like, sentence. You said this or these or that, right. or <laughs> transient or they're it, like. All right, yeah. we'll work on yeah. this one. Do you guys think yeah. we need it, I guess? I do think we need yes. commercial yes. parking facility. All right, so Absolutely. we'll work on it. Yes. Um, <laughs> Could that be a separate building? So if it's part of a building, is it, is it included? I don't know. Commercial parking facility. So if I have a, an underground garage, is that a commercial parking facility? No. I think, oh, well, the way that I would define it is, is if uh, it's a commercial f parking facility if um, I make money off it. Yeah, if if I who don't live in that building can go and pay to park there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if it's to serve like the residents upstairs or the commercial use on the first floor or whatever, it's not the same. That would be. But if I if pay, if a if, if I pay a to random to, Joe can drive in or random John can drive in and pay. Right, and if I can, but if I can drive in. And I can park there for free. To me, that's not a commercial yeah. facility either. Okay. Agreed. 
So you just leases would be included in that payment. Oh, um, so is the law yeah. about the depot is that a commercial parking facility you have to pay to park? The, yes, yeah, okay. to me, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But are you getting at like no. if, the, if I lease a space with your um, unit, without yeah well without if you don't being own an a occupant. car and you have the space provided okay. for you and you lease that out yeah that's a nuance if, 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 if you get to park there without being an occupant and you're paying someone for that parking so okay. right the nuance there is I I own a unit in the building I and I own a spot and then I lease it to someone else. Okay. There's probably uh, a rule in the in the condo doc or in the uh, says that you can't, yeah. can't do yeah. that. Yeah. But I'm looking at uh, Knights of Columbus and um, Reading Co-op, which have parking lots, which they could actually start leasing to the employees or businesses in the downtown for either weekends or days or whatever. They possibly could make a couple of bucks off of that. To me, that would be a commercial lot then. Okay. Uh, if it's not for them, wait, is that a commercial use now of the lot? You think that's the lot? The lot belongs to that use. There, there's. Oh, you mean uh, um, if they? I guess right. There's nuance there, right? If they lease the entire lot to yeah. another user, mm -hmm. and those users park. F okay, well, it so doesn't matter. we're like in the thick yeah. of the conversation yeah. of having these underutilized lots down yeah. downtown become part of our like downtown parking yes. system. So we don't want to make any create any regulations that's going to work at odds with that. Right. So I'm right. Not sure we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just. No, right. no, no, no. Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. I think we all agree with that. So let's just yes. make sure. Yeah, at least until that's that sorted out, and then maybe it requires some definition. Then. So let's just make sure that we're not creating something. Right, because all those all those facilities on Route One down by Gillette Stadium, right? On Sundays they rent out. Yeah. You know, the health center that I used to park at all the time. Mm -hmm. That's certainly not a commercial lot. Right. It's not their primary use. Right. Yeah. Um, well, you have language in here about it's devoted to use or uses, and then it gets confusing. But you know, so it's, it maybe it has to do with primary right. devoted yeah. to the use. Yeah. That primary use. Is a good one. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Because I think that what you what key. you don't what you don't yeah, want, right, or at least the neighborhood I don't think wants is um, the space that is now or formerly owned by Reading Co-op mm -hmm. that was created as a as a parking space for Reading Co-op mm -hmm. with lots of agita. Um, that, that for them to turn that into to put a, a gate on it and a charge card on it and everyone be able to go in and use that. And that's that definitely a commercial use. <laughs> I mean, that's what, right. I think that's yes. I mean, yeah, because right. then, because then, if, if you know, you could do that, you could start that could start creeping right. around. Yeah. yeah, but I could see them doing that because I want to say they have a gate on it already. Yes. Um, they could do it if they have underutilized spaces. They could rent those spaces out to other businesses in downtown for their employees. Yeah, and to me, that's okay. I and that's what the great. difference is, I have no idea. I think that that's <laughs> great. Yeah. 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 Right. And we should encourage yes. that. And so we will be very careful how we yes. define this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We want the businesses to work together to solve their problems. I think there should be a little stairway from Knights of Columbus right into the uh, back of the CBS parking lot. And I honestly think, I'll just throw it out there, um, uh, I, personally, I'm not necessarily opposed to the idea of of the commercial space, like for the former or the Reading Co-op. But I think that needs to be that needs to be a discussion with the community about all the externalities and right. the associated with that. So, yeah. 
because it, it may something like that actually may be a benefit to the to the neighborhood that people are parking there and not in front of their houses, right? Yeah, I mean, and you, you know, this it, big ugly these, empty lot in the meantime. Yeah. yeah so. Tell us how you really feel. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're being televised. Right? I know. <laughs> So commercial amusement fit into commercial indoor, indoor commercial service, a consumer service retail establishment. So consumer service retail establishment, we actually changed to personal services, which will relate to retail a bit. Just jump ahead to personal services. I just thought it was, well, the definition of consumer service retail establishment is so big. Yeah. I think we were looking for those, including but not limited to definitions. We want to capture things that are of personal need and you're getting, and I don't want to say an experience out of it, but you're not just buying a good, you're getting like a job done. Is, is that industry terminology though? I mean, consumer services is like, it's a lexicon, right? It's stupid. I mean, well, no, you know what? It's that part in and of itself is not stupid. It's the, what's stupid is the number of different words in this definition that all kind of mean the same thing or that overlap with each other. So individual, personal, consumer, you know, and then the retail, and then there's services, and then there's, it's just, it's like, I don't know. But yeah, you use those, you just put those back into personal services, individual services, personal needs, right? You just put them into But you give definition. examples is what you do. Yeah. And then we distinguish it from, um, from a retail store. Yeah. And from what I've seen, most bylaws call it a personal service. So you're seeing the word. I, I'm yeah. just asking. Right. So yeah. I yeah. haven't seen it termed that way. There's like personal services, professional. Yeah. Personal services, retail. Personal services, professional. And personal wireless service. So I assume that we would all redefine these as retail establishment, comma, or hyphen, personal service, retail establishment, comma, um, you know, um, or, you know, put them, we? so we do it so that they're all Do you together. want us to do that? I think so, because, be right, you get, you have to guess right here. Are they all retail? All right, this one says retail. Well, like, I, it okay. depends on how we grew. Yeah. Chart, so right? yes. if you have them all grouped that way, then that makes sense. then we would do that, yes. right? Yeah. 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 Right. We would make yeah. a match. Mm -hmm. Retail. Yes, retail Convenience store. store. Personal services. And a retail store is different from a convenience store. I was just wondering that if you, um, I would say convenience store does have a lot of in and out traffic. I don't know that we need to separate them, but I was just looking at that as something I didn't notice beforehand. I think when I think about convenience stores and the type of things you listed under personal service, I think the hours come into play again yeah. as well in terms of externalities as the convenience stores can be all over the first day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it did. I don't know if they hey. miss you, but they tend to, to right. open earlier or stay open later. Mm -hmm. Great. Yep, they're still never going to have the traffic of a market basket. No. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And that, yeah, they're different from a grocery store. Right. Yeah. Usually they have seven or eight parking spaces, and if they're all full at one time, it's usually right at closing when somebody's trying to get an <laughs> extra. Something. And actually, I guess that's a good question because when I was just looking at the definition of retail again, grocery stores are included in the retail, mm -hmm. and then convenience stores are separate. I don't know. Could provide a separate <laughs> definition for grocery stores. Um, 
If you look under institutional and large format in the category, in the table too, we have, re this is a huge number, but retail store more than 35,000 square feet, which has different impacts and triggers. Yeah. Um, we were wondering if that's something that you're interested in keeping. Maybe not that exact number, but. Yeah, like distinguish do you, that. Just, do you remember where the number 35,000 came from and like how that was generated? Because we didn't make that up. That was it's already in the 35,000 square feet or 35,000 cubic feet? 35,000 square. square feet. Uh, and just as an example, home goods in business A up the street is 23,000 square feet, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so where, where are we in this? So in the table. On page one, institutional yeah. and large format is retail. I think that number was generated sometime when either that period where uh, Dennis property, where uh, Market Basket, and where um, uh, Home Depot were all um, being developed. Right, those all, all three of those developed was really. The market Basket was all around the same time as uh, Home Depot. He, uh, after, mm. after, for sure. Within the same five-year period, right? What's that? Home Depot, Market Basket, Stop and Shop. But within the same no, five to seven-year period. I yes. thought it was Stop and Shop, then Market Basket. <laughs> yeah, you're yes, right. It was Stop and Shop, Market yes. Basket. <laughs> so within the same five to seven-year period, and they, so they were all sort of in discussion in that same time frame. So um, in Whole Foods wants, for one of their major stores, they want like 60, 65,000 square feet. That's that's where they're looking. That's what they wanted up at, um, you know, the mm -hmm. proposed right. yeah. here, and that's what they have. I think in Linfield. That's like sixty-five thousand. Yeah, that's like that's the one, right? The Linfield one is about uh, that. You think? I Maybe. think it is. Okay. It it's might bigger be. than the Home Depot. Huh. That's How what big they is the Home Depot? No, he said home goods. Oh, home goods. Home goods. Home goods, no. home goods might be in that. 30, home goods is twenty to twenty-three to twenty-five thousand. Yeah. yeah. I just don't know why we need to distinguish it in the use table. Typically, something like that would trigger site plan yeah, review. I, I, I'd have to really dig deep into some old documents to see if I can figure well, out like why that number The size of the parcels yeah. available in the zoning districts is largely going to determine where these yeah, things yeah, go. Yeah, and the yeah. parking and the access, yeah. you know. So, like, we may not need to have that called out specifically. The problem becomes what do you do with the. Um, Mini mall development where you've got two or three of these 30, 35,000 square foot or 25,000 square foot stores. What do you do when? Well, think about it. You're saying, okay, you can have a store that's 23,000 and Home Goods sits by itself, so the traffic is one. That's not bad. If you had four of those stores, you're up to 100,000 square feet, your traffic is going to be huge. And there's a build-on effect because the more stores you have, the more likely people are going to go to it. You can have your anchors and your little stores, you're going to get even more traffic. I think that what happens there is, so you've got setbacks and then you need parking. Yeah. And so you sort of start squeezing down the footprint of the building. There's only so much building you can actually put on and balance out the parking piece. Is this just a case where your first point of what we want to prohibit, that we don't want that downtown, so we have to call that out, say we don't want I don't know that it would ever happen downtown right. because of all the right. things that Nick talks yeah. about. Right. Yeah. The parking demands, the traffic generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, we would have a traffic study and it would be ridiculous. We would, yeah. Like, no. You know, yeah. then it's not going to come in under the smart growth district. It could come in under business B, I guess. But, like, it just seems unlikely. Right. right? Probably would, not yeah. impossible, I but I'd say unlikely. Yeah, I just don't remember why the number's there. You know, there's a number that sticks in my head as for residential, I think. If you're over 30,000 cubic feet, you're required to stamp those drawings. So the building switch is supposed to require I don't think with residential you need to stamp. Unless that's changed recently. I don't do residential, so I think there's a trigger where they want a professional stamp on a set of house plans if they're big. Yeah. But that trigger is going to be determined by the building commissioner. Yeah, but it might have been something that... In the building code. It might have been just something that we said was like a trigger because it, it changes the nature of the building, right? So 23,000 square feet, that's a that's a big store, right? Yeah, it's a big, big store. 35,000, just don't know where it came from.
the thing is, um, then there's the question of like if we already have a definition and we, we aren't really capturing it necessarily anywhere else, will removing it raise a red flag for people and have people be worried and what if and that this and that and the other like because we can sit here and talk about how it's unlikely and so and maybe we don't need it because of land use patterns and available parcel size and traffic and whatever but like taking it out entirely is a whole other yeah yeah uh, yeah right? and it would I, generate a lot of I, I mean, like what we're doing here is oh wait wait what would the yeah. implications of and, that be and i guess i do caution and uh, you know I, I guess we need to think about this is when we get to the table is making changes to the table we have to be really cautious that there's a reason why every every change especially when we're reducing someone's property rights there has to be a reason why that's happening. Yes. Um, and not, uh, um, not and just when we, swim. Right. Oh, we don't want that here. You know. Right. I mean, there, because it really is taking people's rights away um, that they used to have. And to some degree, the definitions do as well. But I think what we're doing with the definitions is refining refining everything that used to be in the, subst <laughs> the substantially similar to category. Yeah, and there are some places where it's expanding. But yeah, yes, there, yeah, there, should yeah. Be, there, there should be a, a kind of a, a well understood reason for yeah. change. Yeah. And maybe, maybe Tony could figure it out by going to the PUDB and the PUDB overlays and figuring out what the lot coverage is and then doing the math backwards to figure out what size lot you'd actually need to put a 35,000 square foot building on. I'm going through the old building bylaws just to find out when it came when it in. Can, yeah. it, you know, I'm up to 2013, there was no 35,000 limit. Oh, really? Oh, so pretty recent. Oh. Was it during the um, what? the overhaul? Yeah, it is. Was it during the overhaul in 2014? So that means it was 2014 or 2015 because it didn't happen on my watch. You don't know that. I do. Oh, I so hope it's in there. <laughs> what did you say? I so hope it's in You've had baby brain, remember, or whatever yeah. it was for a while. <laughs> Pregnancy brain, and yeah. now I have mommy brain. Yeah. You'd come in there, and you'd be like, oh, I'm scared. No, it didn't happen on my watch. Right yeah, now. I'm pretty sure it didn't. Yeah. Ask Andrew. My office is organized cut chaos and my mind is a steel trap. Right, Andrew? Yes, definitely. 2015, I November of 2015. I started on November 30th of 2015. <laughs> I told you it wasn't on my watch. Well, it wasn't that, that was when it was approved? That's when the, the town, I, meeting. That's the town meeting, meeting approved version. I don't know what the dates are. This is zoning bylaw. It, they date. They usually date back to the town meeting when it was voted. Yeah, I think so. Bylaws. So November of 2015. So that was only, you know, five and change years ago. Huh. More than change years ago. What else? Uh, what else would have been happening? I'm going to see if I can find my notes. It was a under 35 and under 35. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, but what know. is there? We didn't just change that, right? No. Yeah. Started putting on. And where where is over 35 allowed? Oh, wait, oh, there's a whole other page. Under, uh, yeah, so we had just moved it to large format because yeah. it seemed like it should go there. Whereas the other one's under retail and consumer, and we, retail store up to 35,000 square feet. We just removed because it seems um, like maybe not necessary that, yeah. to say that. Just a note that should Before then, there was no limitation on the retail size. Do we capture it in the definition? The over 35,000 required a special permit, but it's only allowed in the PUDs. I can think of a, I can think of a number of hy completely hypothetical reasons why, at, at one point, folks in town wanted to say, "Okay, we aren't having huge box stores anymore. Huge box stores in town." Yeah, it's a big store. Yeah, yeah. We had it. it might have to do with um, the 
the Walkersbrook development too. Yeah. The, the sizes of things there. Yeah, the Walkersbrook is 100% built out of that. Yeah. I don't know, but we might have used it as an example, like the yeah. Home yeah. Depot's X yeah. square feet and yeah. uh, Jordan's X so square feet. So we can leave it alone because it is fairly recent. Like everyone at town meeting will remember and be like, we did that for this reason. And well, we're not changing it until we find out why it's in there. Yeah. So yeah. let's just yeah. leave it for now. And mm -hmm. Yeah. And if it's doing no harm, it maybe doesn't matter if we right. just leave it alone. It's it is the kind of thing where if you, know, you, you went to town meeting and you saw this, you'd say, "What are we allowing big stores now?" It might, it might, it, yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it might, it might generate kind of the a, a, a misplaced reaction, but a reaction nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Well, right now, you you're going to need special permit. It's going to be a PUD. So you're talking major um, site plan review to put a new store in. For more yeah. than thirty five thousand. For more than thirty five thousand. Yeah, and we yeah. didn't change that. Which is huge. That's just yeah. the way it is. Bigger than right. The home goods, so yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a big plan, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's half the size of the market basket or stocking shop. I want to say one seventy one, and the other sixty nine. Yeah. So moving along, okay. um, the I, my question, I, I think we're down to. Um, Co-working facility. Yep. Um, why call that out and not just integrate that into the office professional? I think we thought the same. Um, I guess well, we just wanted to call out that specific use to say that they're allowed. I didn't think the same. Really? No, I was thinking that um, there may be a big difference in traffic. If you think about a professional office that has maybe people coming by appointment every half an hour or whatever, and a co-working facility where people drive there maybe in the morning and then are there most of the day. So I don't know, I was thinking about it a little bit differently. That doesn't mean it can't fit into another category we already have though. Well, one thing, you know, the last couple of years until I worked, went under. That's what their whole we work. stick was. Well, there's, we work. There's, we work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I work is you know what you do at home. Co work is what you do with no, no, me. We worked as a company that was buying. I know, up. I know. I'm jo I'm making a joke. Yeah. Of what you said. Sorry. Um, and then there's um, work bar. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Or, yeah. yeah. And some of them actually use space in old, like in Staples facilities, like in yeah. the back of the Staples. So is there, is there, um, I'm, I'm looking at the, at the co-working facility definition and the office, the professional office definition. And I do see that it's used to provide services to customers. But aren't there also professional offices where they may not be there may not be customers yeah. coming out, but essentially function the same as uh, uh, you go there and you work, and you might have meetings, but you don't have customers coming out in and out. And I guess I'm wondering is that is that type defined separately, or is that envisioned as coming under professional office also? So, I think you need to. You, so there's a comma after customers, a big long clause, and then or a service that involves yes. some specialized skill or knowledge, um, uh, typically obtained through advanced education yes, and training. Yes. So I, I think that. it covers um, all type of professional office environments that you would think of. Yes. Yeah, and we will including ones that happen to. Have customers. have customers. We'll go through and fine tune all of these, like to hone the verbiage yeah. mm -hmm. a little bit too, and make um, and the grammar so they read. Um, so you were thinking, which I think I heard you get to, is you were thinking that um, a co working facility might include. We you might allow a co working facility in something that wasn't typically an office. You said like the back of Staples, so they may apply for, uh, to to include a co-working facility. Yeah, if like the, you know, if there was enough parking on site. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. Or it could be like, like, I think it would be a funky, you 
groups of the Walgreens and people could walk there. Like, you know, yep. A decent population in town that work from home that maybe want a third place to go. But from a, let's keep it simple, wouldn't they just, uh, wouldn't it just be you know, a different kind yeah. of office? So, right. Yeah. So, I just don't know that it's necessarily the same as a professional office. Um, but I think in terms of people coming and coming to work and, you know, they, they make their own hours, their flexible hours. I'm just thinking of the way that one might go around in their daily life. If, um, I'm just thinking even in my own professional life, we've worked into co-working facilities so people don't have to work in offices of one. And it doesn't, whether or not they're working in a co-working facility or they're working in an office of one or two, actually doesn't change the flow of what they're doing or even their commute. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it might allow them to have a working location that's closer to home. But in, but in the course of how you might come and go, I don't think there's a big change. difference than from other types of office facilities. Mm -hmm. So should um, we lump it together I think with we do. professional I mean, have my company works yeah, in co-working facilities and it doesn't, it, it does, makes, you don't it makes see it no, different. No. Okay. Because totally. they tend to have the same needs, right? So I see uh, they might have a shared reception that we're talking about and then shared restroom facilities and maybe yeah. shared conference shared facilities. Conference yeah, facilities. actually, there is a building on the way to like Milford or something. Yeah, like should printer, copy, yeah, reaches. But what if too. what if the uses aren't necessarily compatible, or not normally compatible? So you, you picture this co-working facility to be, it's a, a tax service and then some other type of office function and then somebody who just I don't know maybe some real. Usually there's a manager, right? And there's yeah. certain parameters if you want to rent space. Like I used to work in a co-working facility actually. But is there a different type of mix? That would be different than just a professional office. I mean, maybe we just need a more broad definition of office. office. Professional office, yeah. We'll, we'll work on that. Do you still that. see the co-working facility as being an office type function, an office type use? Or could it be, uh, I don't know, a small part assembly? Well, that's where some people did consider it, like maker space type, but I think that's where we tried to separate the two from one being that office used to one being that assembly type. Okay. Yeah. And I do see this definition differentiates it from the definition of the maker space one. Yeah, and because you have that sentence here about fabrication tools are limited right. to those, which not. So it, it would be more like the standard office needs, like you were saying, like in the standard office setup. Um, but maybe. I think we can lump that into professional okay. office. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. That's good news for the water space. Oh. Uh, some sort of common yeah. use. I think it would be super awesome. Like, a, like right Boston downtown. Public Market, yeah. like a mini yeah. Boston Public Market or Worcester Public Market, where there's like a bunch of little things going yeah. on inside yeah. that space. Yeah, it'd be really yeah. That'd be great. Yeah, just need to get... Reading market. Gotta find somebody to hey, like the red market. Like the red I was, market. I didn't even realize. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, Philadelphia. Yeah. Is that the name of the market in Philadelphia? Is, right. Yeah. Reading yeah. Terminal Market. Yeah. Been there. Okay. Yeah, it's the old cool. Reading. It's right by the conference center. Yeah. All right. So make Convention that happen. <laughs> Get the economic. Right. I got that guy on. Yeah. The, <laughs> on All right. So we went through drinking yeah. establishments. Um, down to exempt religious or educational use. I think that's um, pretty cut dry. I mean, in that it ties it into a title. Yeah. Yeah, like we might want to do religious or educational use, comma, exempt. Yes. You know. But then you're, you're going to put it under R, or you're going to put educational use first, put it under E? Uh, we would do whatever the other one is. <laughs> we would make them line up with each other and yeah, then match the table. Yeah. yeah. This is just this was this is the quick and dirty that we threw together in three yeah, hours absolutely. last week. <laughs> a lot of work here, this is good. Um, it is. Um facility for skilled trade. I have no idea what this is. I don't know if it's like a contractor's yard and garage. It's allowed in multiple zones. It's found under 
light industry right now in our new table. Where is it in our old table? This is why we need to fix this table because we don't even know where to work for this. Yeah, so that this is a use that was in the table but not the laundry. Yes. Right, correct. Oh, here it is. It's under business and service uses and, and it's allowed but with a, a footnote. It is part of on site garage. Yeah. I don't know if that's a contractor's garage. So, if I remember correctly, and I may not, we had, right, we had a contractor's yard, um, and uh, this, I, the idea of this was it's a, a use that is not an outdoor use, it's an indoor use. Facility for skilled trade is supposed to be indoor. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, a contractor's yard should be outdoor. Yes. Do we, do we not have contractors yard anymore? We don't, which is probably something we should add. Which was uh, outdoor storage. Which, so did we change it to outdoor storage? Because I think we do have an outdoor storage thing okay. here. Or is it an accessory? accessory. Open storage. storage. Oh, yeah, so we probably don't need contractors. Yeah, maybe not. So the difference being, you know, if you, if, if you house all your stuff in your garage and you do, whether it's you're doing work on a car, or you, you know, you store it indoors, what's the, what's the externality? Right. It's just trucks coming and going once a day, maybe. So you don't have that same, that same, um, impact that you would with the with the outdoor retail. storage. Or yeah, or retail. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you have the same impact? The trucks come and go. They just park outside versus inside. Well, no, you don't have people working on. Right, you don't have outdoor storage. You don't. It's not a. It's not like. It's. Um, it's not like a contractor's yard. It's not northeast next to me. It's, What's that? It's not like a northeast nursery. It's like right, right. It's a it's a garage. You know, tree guys. You know, they have all their they have all their uh, saws and chainsaws and stuff. They work on in there. They have their truck in there. It's it's not. It's it's a different it's a different set of impacts. So that's you where have that came from. For that. <laughs> yeah, that's where yeah. that I'm came from. There was a whole John. discussion. Oh, wow. There was this whole discussion <laughs> about how can we allow? Do do, do you yeah, remember, remember this the contractor yard? It's like once the contractor yard, there's nothing in here for it. I yeah. forget which builder it was. Yeah. yeah well, um, I mean, what about the thing behind Global Gas Station there, on the corner of Washington and Maine? Right between that gas station and the house, there's there's this whole lot full of trucks. That is. Open storage of vehicles. Yeah, yeah, and a, a, on a residential lot. lot. It's a residential lot. I don't know how it's a lot or what it's a lot for. Yeah. Are they all registered vehicles? I don't know. Mm. What was the E? No. I can guarantee you at least four of them. Is that on. lot technically joined with the one no. next door? No. Yeah. I don't know. It didn't used to be. Is it under zoning, or is either of them undersized, or are they in common ownership? No, because well, didn't there used to be a, a, a building there on that? A house there, there was a house there. Yes. Did it burn down, or did it get it taken down. down? Yeah. Are they parked on pavement? Mm, probably Partially. not. not. I think it's probably not. Stuff. Partially. The yeah. things care about. Yeah. Yeah. Concrete. Is it concrete pad? So when we're talking about skilled trades, are we talking about somebody who customizes old cars? Sure. That might be. Sure. Or who installs stereo equipment in cars? What kind of trades were you thinking about? Yeah, that's. Or do we talk about construction trades, electricians, plumbers, or woodworkers? There are some of those, right? We want to make sure they've got space and yeah. Yeah, we're gonna come up with a definition. Yeah, it needs more I'm not culture. saying that it's a great. I'm just I'm giving input on where sort of how it I'm, I'm, how I'm, it came I'm, to what, what yeah. it was supposed to be. Yeah, right. what it was supposed right. to be. Upholsters. Yes. Yeah. So the, this exists basically as the 
the indoor version of an outdoor contractor start. Yes. Okay. So knowing that, we can try to right. figure something out. Because you might allow one in some zones and not in one, not in the other. Or you would want to make sure that you know which, you know, not let it creep on to, into one or the other. Okay. I'm surprised there wasn't a definition for it. Well, but it does have a footnote that says requires on site garage for all vehicles and enclosed storage for all materials. Yeah. I think that's as far as we got. <laughs> then you only have to amend one section of the bylaw. What's that? Then you only have to amend one section that's, of the bylaw, right? <laughs> yes. Yep. Uh, so just moving down further, financial institution was a use in the table that wasn't defined. Um, right now we have it separate from office professional and also professional services, so we can either try to combine those all or keep them separate if we think they need to be. Well, I mean, in the past, it would have meant that there were a lot of customers going back and forth, right? <laughs> but I don't think it's true anymore. No, I don't know I, think ever. I, well, I'll say I like to refine, I like refining the definition. Mm -hmm. I also think that at this point, keeping the definition as it is in the thought about, you know, being cautious about changing and deleting things in the table mm -hmm. before we, um, before we, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. start grouping things together. Because mm -hmm. yeah. well, there's a lot of yeah. things. That, well, in fact, that we're excluding we yeah. yeah. those yeah. things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, there's value in that right there. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Value in what, sorry? Excluding the freestanding ATM. Yeah. So you like it more or less? Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have provided a definition for funeral establishments where there was not one. <laughs> um, I don't know if crematoriums is plural. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> I think it needs more work, but I did want to get in something that average grade prior to construction while we're here at definitions. Yeah. So yeah, I think we need to um, not now, but I think we do need to make sure we tackle this yeah. height. Um, Pre-development grade. Right, something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. 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 And we had. Um, in the downtown smart growth district in the design guidelines we have it but it's not actually in the zone yeah so that's and i think we worked very hard on that definition the one in the design it's guidelines. actually very thin though it's weird it's not as robust as i thought it was i was looking at it last week when i was talking oh. about it. Oh. i wrote it based on either other guidelines or the ipc Oh, yeah, right. Because it has right. to do with we, we use it a lot in the signage height definition. Yeah, signage height, yeah. building height. Yeah. So many definitions. Otherwise, your for sign height. height could yeah. Be way up. Um, <laughs> you just build a mound around it, and you yes. say, "Oh, I get fifty feet from here," or whatever, <laughs> as opposed to grade or road. Or we will whatever. look at that. Yep. So I'll explore that further. Did we move light manufacturing under yep. manufacturing so just, light? Yep, so we yeah. just move right down to manufacturing heavy and light. Um, most towns distinguish between the two, but trying to find specific examples of light manufacturing is not easy. Can I, can I go back a little bit? Mm -hmm. um, I think that... 
Well, luckily, Junkyard and Landfill are right next to each other. Um, and I would say that I think somewhere we need to include um, uh, recycle or make sure that we cover um, a recycling facility. And allow it so that we can have more of them? Well, um, no. You mean I mean, well, no. commercial recycling, meaning, um, you know, somewhere between the junkyard and the <laughs> landfill is a facility where people come and take um, uh, recycling and churn it up into something or mm -hmm. compact it. So like the places in Somerville on. And then put it into trucks and sell it to, well, it used to be to China, but, you know, not anymore. But um, that is huge business because there are no more landfills in, in the state. And so um, we want to, neither of these sort of contemplate that. Um, and we want to make sure that's covered. Are you saying that there are also redemption centers for cans? Not the recycled material, but for the actual okay. deposit. Fund. Oh, so I wasn't. Uh, yeah, I wasn't really thinking about that. But, but there saying are those. there are. And yeah. So it's a whole different traffic pattern, and right? There, yes. And there might be more. Um, Sorry, of which? Well, we're dead, she said. So I may be getting ahead of myself. So there's a chance that there might be more. There's like the difficulties in recycling. There's just this light talk about increasing the, the deposits to to encourage more redemption. I don't know. It just it's, it's good to consider that as well. Redemption centers. Whole different. Series of problems, right? There's odors and insects and rodents and stuff. Oh, yeah. The cans are never clean and a lot of traffic. Okay. And um, this, I think, this life science facility definition. Um, I, if I remember correctly, we talked about this in, in, on two different sort of occasions where we're going through definitions and um, sort of kick the can down the road on this, that it, maybe it should be bigger, maybe it should be smaller, maybe it, it more inclusive or less inclusive, and I'm not sure that this is exactly what we This want. go around? No. Or before? Before. Okay. All right. I was like, I'm not remembering. Yes. So, do you think that this it's kind of specific? We could, we could probably. I general. mean, it could be the it could be like including but not limited to <laughs> right. biomedical engineering, biotechnology, medical devices, nanotech. Definitely do that. And that's kind of what we're doing in a lot of the definitions mm -hmm. is just getting mm -hmm. ideas of. Is there, I'm just looking at this and I'm wondering, in natural product pharmaceuticals is listed there, is there a reason it was limited to natural product pharmaceuticals? To say pharmaceuticals. Or do we not want? Well, yeah, that's why I'm asking. I'm asking if it was, yeah. if, if, if there was a reason to do including not limited to. I just, I just, we need to work on this definition and keep it um, as generic as we can because the mm -hmm. modalities are changing yeah. constantly. They're yeah. just, you know, companies are starting facilities and then changing midstream to a different process because the new development comes up. So we need to capture some of that. Virology. Virology. <laughs> <laughs> Viral vectors are big, but it's advanced. It's a, it's a PTMP is the testing thing now, right? for and advanced therapy medicine, medicinal products is the biggest thing. Right, where they're going to make something for you specifically, mm. in your blood. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Do we want to, at that point, limit the virility of the um, products being worked on? No, I think we might already have something in there. So, Woburn, for example, doesn't allow anything over the SL2 lab, which is the, the I don't know, call like it, the biohazard. The, yeah, the biohazard, yeah. 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 right? Yeah, yeah. So, one and two are pretty, pretty minor, even viral stuff is two. But like the BU lab is a four, right? They're right. dealing with yeah. Ebola or something. Right. And that's probably the way to limit it, because the reason yes. to limit it is, um, again, things like hazards. Is hazards, yeah. right? 
Um, you'll still get a lot of those hazards if we got if we were lucky enough to get a biotech manufacturing or something. You still get some of the flammables, but it wouldn't be sure. the escape hazard of a three or a four. So I think we should just check with our health department probably. Mm -hmm. Just to make sure that we have a BSL two limit. In like so is it something that the local board of health determines for well, the it's town? In, it's actually in the zoning. It's in Woburn zoning. Okay, we'll check Woburn zoning. Yeah. And Waltham might be another place to check, just because there are a lot of yeah. biotech um, startups out yeah. that way, and you know, a lot of people things out there. It's called yeah. BSL. BSL, so biosafety level. Biosafety level. I would okay. guess Burlington, and I would guess Bedford, and I would guess the RICA all have something related yeah. to that too, Lexington because Bedford. all that yeah, whole yeah, Lexington. And Burlington's yeah. working to incentivize them more right now. Get those in there. So related here, I mean, it's sort of uh, the research and development facility. I, I know I'm jumping around. It, that's yeah. actually under R. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we talk about a lab or fim, uh, a similar facility, blah, 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 engineering, geology, but excluding life sciences facilities. So um, we want to make sure that those two, that we're not that those two work together? Stay different. Yeah, so here's one of the triggers. Um, if you have an R&D facility, you, you are not subject to some of the NFPA codes for the materials you're using, right? So you have a commercial facility, it's a different building, yeah. different mm -hmm. codes for how you handle certain materials. Okay, so is it good to have it distinct like this? Um, yeah, we should probably talk. So an R&D lab, for example, is very different than a biotech lab or a biopharma lab that's developing some commercial product. Once you go commercial, you've got different regulations on how you handle flammables and what the limits are. When you're producing stuff. Here. Yeah, when you're making the actual, uh, either the actual pharmaceutical or some component that's going to go to some other lab to be developed into some medicine. Cool. Good to jump around when necessary, John. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. We will we'll try to make this easier for everyone. Um, did you have any other comments on page nine? No. Um, okay. And then we get back to manufacturing heavy versus light. from Watertown, but I think okay. that's what we call for in terms of nuisances. Yeah. Um, uh, I knew her curious if that's a good distinguishment. So what would commonly recognize? No, I was just curious. I think it's I think it's been Five, two, two. If it's not no Too principal high. accessory you said is offensive because of obnoxious noise, vibration, yada, yada, yada. Well, but recognized offensive conditions doesn't, we don't have to specify like what the, um, what makes it offensive, but commonly recognized. So odor is noise, right? Right. right. Uh, okay. Debris yeah. or something, yes. right? So it's an odor. We don't have to say that it has to be yeah, some and I was just—I was just curious about. Okay, is that is that solid enough? It seems it seems nice and broad. I like that. It's solid enough. And it's, it, five, it five two, two, two two. Okay. Because yeah. um, I could see that being a question asked. I mean, odors, noise, traffic, storage of, of um, devices. You know, like somebody storing Light. tires, for example, yeah. like water, and then cause insect problems. Or, yeah. Um, Floodlights. 
it's good. It's good the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> but if somebody were to ask us, and we could we could throw out like five or six of them very quickly every time, then it would be apparent that we no. they are common. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, on light manufacturing, the last clause, mm -hmm. but excluding basic industrial processing, custom manufacturing, and artisanal fabrication. Why would it exclude, Why would it exclude those? Yeah. So I would Why? think those were the things, right. those are really Why? the things like, that we want, right? right? <laughs> right? And yeah. probably what most light manufacturing is moving towards. Right. Yes. Where did that come from? Arlington or Watertown? Yeah, both had very similar definitions. I'm wondering yeah, if I'm wondering if that was excluded because there was a yet another definition that yeah. we, that right. was That's focused what I was on thinking. Those, yeah. I feel like we have those separated yeah. in our what's that? Another definition called artisanal manufacturing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or creative arts. <laughs> so if you're manufacturing signs, can you not tell them what to make? First mm -hmm. a long walk. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good. I had the same question. Those, those, thing, those, those three phrases, terms themselves, also seem like they must be defined somewhere else. There must be a reason for excluding them. So I want to make sure that we're not inadvertently yeah. boxing something check out. Check and see so if they had something done. else. So we so check and see if they had something yeah. else. Yeah, somewhere else. And, and that, yeah. are we covering that yes. somewhere else, or maybe we need to add some? terms and maybe right. they allow those in a different area and that's why they differentiated mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. right to us. Um, yeah i could see in this world in the you know sort of the world we live in now um i'm not sure about industrial processing because i'm not exactly sure what the definition of that would be but you know custom manufacturing and artisanal fabrication could be 3d you know some 3d printing type of setup where it's really not uh, where it might be more like the makerspace um, uh, yeah. and not what we would typically think of as light yeah. industrial. Right. And I think of custom manufacturing as, um, again, like, like woodwork. You want like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're not, you're not doing mass production, mass production yeah. Yeah. but doing something for a particular client that's designed for them. And there, it, there, maybe there was a reason that they differentiated. Yeah, yeah. 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 look at that. Yeah. By the way, the leather place I was talking about was called American Bench. Right? They were in Reading up until 17, and then they moved to Wilmington. Oh, also did not was like no more. I got out of the office, I no more. Okay. Medical institution. And so, Andrew, what was the deal with this one? Oh, it was defined, but we redid the definition. Yeah, I think we wanted to separate it from office, medical, medical office. clinical, yeah. Because, yeah, we, we put medical institution under, like, large format, Large right? format, yeah. And then, like, medical office. As well. Yeah. Like clinical office? Clinical, yeah, office, yeah. clinical. Yeah. That's what you call it. Um, so, I mean, we could recategorize this title to hospital. Is, is, is it, the definition is limited to those facilities accredited as a hospital, right? Right. So it is? I, this is a realm that I, I don't know the details of, but are those kind of strictly what we think of as hospitals? I would agree. Care yeah. facilities, not yeah, like physical thing, rehab yeah. facilities. What about those all of you urgent yeah, care facilities I that think, are popping up? Yeah. Where do those fall under? Um, is it, I think we include urgent care under office clinical. Yeah, I think the office clinical is somewhat, it allows more than just an office because it mentions um, facilities for providing these services for outpatients. But I don't think we want to limit the definition of medical institution to only be a, an accredited hospital. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about the in-between of like an inpatient physical rehab facility. I mean, I, we don't have any here, but, mm -hmm. yeah. but, but, the, but the old definition, yeah. I think, included something like this, and this would box mm -hmm. something like that out that is useful to people that need them if it was in the space for something like that here. Yeah. Here, yeah, here I think we're being too limiting. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. 
because you don't cover chiropractic care. Well, that right. could be or sports medicine. Right. right, I say sports medicine and physical therapy. We physical have therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Chiropractic care could probably fall under clinical, office clinical. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like this is so what we're talking about with medical institution here is we've categorized it under our large format use categories. We're thinking of like the bigger what? facilities as distinguished from um, urgent care, which is kind of that medium size, and then like smaller, like physical therapy. Yeah. Yeah. Mixed use as mentioned was approved, so that would be added in. Although I will add on that in the table of uses. Um, we did propose to allow it in the industrial zone under special permit as well, due to the new crossing road gambler associates study, and just thinking about that for the future. Um, So where, yeah, we have it under other uses, other, like uses, other principal yeah. uses, um, which is page four of, of the use table document. And um, is it, yeah, for a special permit under industrial or under PU.DI overlay. So what was approved by the last round and by the um, attorney, attorney general? Attorney general. It's only business A and business C. Okay. So this would be an addition for the industrial and the UDI. And we allow mixed use in business B under the downtown Spark Roads district, right. so we're covered there as well. Yeah. Just note that on the uh, document, it, doesn't, it does not note that that is a change. Okay. okay, there it is. You have to see all markup, not simple markup. Gotcha. Hmm. Okay. And the PUDB overlay, is that just Calarissos? What is the PUDB overlay? Oh, I looked for that over and over again. Uh, yeah, I guess it could be. Because we kind of like, yeah. we need to like look at that column and like really figure out what these Shit. new things we're adding, but we, we kind of left it alone, like mostly. Yeah. Yeah. PUDI is much more expansive, it's a whole big I mean, area. Unless it, unless it also is up over at um, REI. Mm-hmm. Is it mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's just the yeah. we also put it over there. We'll look. I have. I had. That's. I can look that up. I just thought I would ask. I thought that, that there was another development that went through PUDB. A smaller yeah, one. maybe. Definitely possible because they're kind of all over. Yeah. Okay. All the over. the overlays are all over, not PUDBs, but. Yeah, it's over by where REI is. Oh wait, no, no, that's take that back. No, 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 that's B. Yeah, that's B. And then this is PRD. That's a PRD. Yeah. Scroll out for a second. Scroll up. Out or over down over South Main. Yeah, over. So down over here. I want to see because so, I know there's a PUDB at Calaris. I'm, is that Calaris's down there? Yeah, and, and then and then maybe up up to north or west. Was that a PUDR across the street? This is an R, yeah. Yeah. What's and did we look at that one already? Oh, that's Pearl Street, isn't it? Yeah, municipal yeah, reuse. Yeah. And then 
use one of yeah, these. And then we have one up here. <laughs> yeah, they're all over. Well, that's probably P U D R or P R D. P U D. Okay, and then it's this one at the top. P U D. P R D. So I think that is the only P U D B is Calarissos. So we have like a whole. I guess, you know, because we could that. have another one. If we it, could, yeah. What went through town meeting. All right. It's a painful process. <laughs> Don't recommend it to anyone. Just make zoning better. <laughs> uh, so, we, I mean, if anyone has comments on the office clinical, like I said, it kind of includes more than office, so we have to separate those or call it something else that we can. Um, services, we went over. I have to find a definition for publishing and printing facility. And then we're down at the restaurant stuff. Do it. Uh, back to office professional. Now, the last two sentences, the term office business or professional shall not include medical offices for physician, dentist. Shouldn't that be office clinical or clinical offices? Referring back to the original, to the uh, yeah. prior. Yeah, we'll clarify that. And then also, yeah, yeah office the business. business. Yeah. yeah, and so we'll clarify this. Yeah. So, uh, remote parking facility, if it needs to be um, looked at in conjunction with commercial parking, the definition of commercial parking. So maybe we want to say parking facility, comma remote parking facility, comma commercial. So they get stacked together. Yeah. Because this is silent on whether it's commercial or not. Right. right. Well, they can't, they're mutually exclusive, right? Because, Are they? yeah, so if you have a lot that's a commercial parking facility, you're renting out spots, as opposed to this development having to have a remote parking facility to make their numbers work specifically associated with the use, right? It's just not in the same space. True. At least as far as site well, plan review goes for this development, which needs these parking spaces. Except that, right, it, it could do, one. Uh, that parking lot could do both. But Someone could build, a, build a, a development, ask for, you know, try and get remote parking and build, actually build a garage and then um, and then charge, yeah. And then turn it into both a uh, Part of remote it. facility, remote parking facility, and commercial. But the remote parking part of it is what would apply to the site plan. Yeah. Regardless of whether they're paying for the spaces okay. or not, or how they're doing. Yeah. yeah. You're right. I'm just. I think that it's because this is about meeting some number. Right. Yeah. To get approval for a development. Mm -hmm. Maybe someday somebody will actually do that. <laughs> Behind the new train station over at High Market, that's coming up all like that. Yeah, so we would do that science yeah. centers. Works for me. Running station. Yeah, <laughs> make it work in Beverly. Try to do that. They couldn't? No. Yeah, Manchester and New Hampshire failed with their parking garage as well, I believe, years and years ago. Did you do the yeah. They, yeah, like I think the city owns that parking garage, it's like right down behind the downtown. Yeah, by the, um, um, that. by the convention center. Well, we yeah. used to have an office in that town. So <laughs> nobody parked in there. No, 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 You guys couldn't know each other in the past year. Oh, our, our industry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, so the professional service definition we're getting rid of because we had combined all that into office professional or um, yeah. 
Yep. So it just needs to be crossed off. Okay. The entire definition. Yeah, we had combined it yep. into all the other. Is everything there is covered somewhere else? Yeah. yeah. Do you need a definition for publishing and printing facility? I wonder oh, think so. They're pretty self-explanatory, but well, it's that's the thing, right? It's in our, it's in our. It's in the table, table. It's in but the it's table. not defined. So we either need to remove it from the table or define it. Yes. It's it's yes. funny the things we have in our table, like we have mining. Mining? Mining. It's in the table. So well, it's, it's so know. yeah. It's so the it's sand. There was right there. <laughs> you were on the board when this came up. I think it might have been come. Um, somebody was taking soil. someone was what? Somebody's taking soil from a lot, right? That's yeah, so lot earth removal. No, we and, or is it like a cereal? But you could be more expansive by calling it a sheet case or maybe. Yeah, I mean, you, else. yeah. <laughs> you started a sand pit and you wanted to take and use that for to sell commercially. Yeah, but that's not it's a okay, all right. Before I, that's fine. Down, I think before it's funny. it was a that bylaw that now says you just can't move soil around, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cut and fill and it has to be clean. But before that, yeah. there was concern that someone, I think there was rumors that someone was going to, um, was going to create an extractive business of, of mining sand and selling it. I think it's, it's excluded every time. It is. Yes. Okay. So let's just leave it. <laughs> I just think it's yeah. funny. Like. <laughs> Yeah, no one's. I, I, no I love I getting don't know all the, the definition of mining. Guys, it's so but the definition funny. of mining could very well just be the, the blasting and extraction of all that rock that you might have on a ledgy site. Right? Yeah. And so you're just going to sit there for years blasting this stuff away and then shipping it off site. <laughs> Remind me, I have a story to tell you about that afterwards. Um, uh, so, publishing and printing, sorry, does that include like the. The little FedEx shops now that do printing and, and the right. Kinkos staples and the, staples the same. And stuff. Does that include all that? Oh, uh, that would be retail. I would think of this is more you of a commercial, to... like the Reddit Chronicle building. Um, do they yeah. set type? No. They're using photostatic systems. Well, there just used to be more places. You seem to know a lot about this, Pam. Do yeah. you want to write a definition for us? <laughs> or did you already in your proposed journal is edits? major. This is yeah. the reason why I know that. No, because there's offset printing. All right, I'm just gonna write Pam. <laughs> <laughs> and we will right, circle back so with you on that one. We'll figure that one out. Where is that one? Then put that. And the impacts of that are different from light manufacturing, or is it? We put well, it under light. Some, we put it under the light industry. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of truck deliveries, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours. it's true. A lot of chemicals. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all like soy based ink now. Well, and oddly, so we don't allow it in business A, but we allow it in business B. We allow it everywhere else, but business A. Where there is one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that business A? It's no. A, it, Where? Which? On Washington Street, you thinking? I mean, uh, on Main Street. What are you thinking of? The newspaper. Oh, the, the newspaper. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, oh, yeah. That's they probably business. But do they, they don't print it there? there, do they? No, no. Because it's all one, right? Yeah. The, the right. Daily Chronicle is like right. 20 papers. Right. Yeah. But they are a publisher. Are yes. they not? Yes, they print it there or not. So we have not there anymore. Oh, which is one reason that if we're going to keep it, we do need a definition. Because I think of it being like the not the not the editors, but let's figure out if it's actually two definitions. The actual product that's being created, right? Yeah. Right. Because the way the industry because, works. Well, maybe. if right. it's two okay. definitions, then can those two things get lumped into categories we already have? Right. Probably. Right, because publisher is an, is office. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Office we don't have any book printing facilities, but we certainly put. Well, we do. Staples can put a book together for you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Two hundred yeah. pages. So In, some sort of large scale publishing. Printing is what yeah, you're yeah. I think that would define it large scale. Yeah. Well, yeah. you've got to be careful because you can also have large printing period, i.e. the people who print up billboards, signs along trucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would think more in but terms all of, of that, print isn't media. All of that 
What's the difference between that and light manufacturing? That's what no. I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is so specific. I'm thinking of, you know. So what if we, under our definition of light micro, manufacturing, if we just say, if we add it to our list of things. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Printing, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. And Big add stuff. publishing into the list of, <laughs> of, of, of professional right. authors. Yeah, I think that would it just be seems better. so specific <laughs> when, yeah. we're, when we're lumping so many things into right. other things. Well, we used to have uh, uh, the book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, we do. What was it? Which is they didn't they didn't do their printing there. Which they didn't. There, which was that they didn't? No. no. Ever? Because they, they had some warehouse. They had yeah. Right? They had all sorts well, of. Maybe they, they, they may have a a warehouse. But probably yeah, most of the printing was in China. Well, well, they've been gone for many years, so the printing probably was not in China. But the printing would have been done at major presses. Which are not New York town. State. New York State, uh, I want to say Pennsylvania. They might have been distributing from that facility. Tired. They had a lot of buildings on site. They did, yeah. But I think that's yeah. probably where this yeah. Yeah, probably maybe where once upon a time yeah. they did or right. they wanted yeah. to. Yeah, or we wanted something to make like sure that. they wouldn't, yeah. Yeah. essentially. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's before my time. Yeah, yeah it just seems so specific. <laughs> or like with the newspaper not wanting to have it. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that, so that building is adjacent to a residential neighborhood. And so if you did do publishing and printing there, those trucks would be there at right. 3 a.m., right? Yeah. Loading they drop the, their ink and their paper. paper. So that's the impact there, kind of, sort of. And they're glue for binding. <laughs> We're having this conversation that's like newspapers everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Shuddering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. All right. So, I mean, that just about does it for the definition. Fantastic. And yeah, we talked about how we want to look at fast casual and fast food, right? Yeah. yeah. And I have, I, I don't want to revisit this whole thing, but I need to be reminded, was there a reason to pull the drive through window out of anything, or do we tie that still to kind of the fast food, like including drive through I'm just thinking just about, we don't want it, but that's don't snobby zoning. It. I thought we didn't want drive through windows anywhere, I thought it was, yeah. at least not in the downtown, sorry. Yeah. Right, so if we don't want it, don't we have to define it and then put it? It's already here. So where so let me remind myself what we That's right. Out here. Once you have one, you cannot restrict another unless you write it out of summer. Is it not in here? It's so well we're Xing out restaurant, comma, that if you're like we're deleting that. And I guess I'm wondering, do we want to say anything that's still somewhere? We, we did prohibit drive through oh. somewhere. So there's retail store with drive through window, which we proposed to remove, and restaurant with drive through window, that we proposed to remove. So I don't know what a retail store with a drive through window is. We don't know if we have, would we say? Uh, drive like stores like CVS. True. Banks. Banks. Table. Uh, table. Yeah. Wait, so then. That's a good point. So we might not we want to be drive through, through windows then. I thought that we had it written somewhere and we said no to it. Just you had blanket. originally just had I said drive that through and said no across the board. We just Stop drive through. That's my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good uh, good note on the retail. Yeah. Could be a bank. Yeah. I mean, but the thing is, it just it's such a depending on where it is, as we know from some of our drive through establishments now, it could be a real nightmare. That's well. That's why. That's that. To be clear, that's why I'm wondering. I mean, if what I'm saying, maybe I'm missing something. But what I'm seeing here is that with the changes that we have, this, the definitions will go silent on drive through windows, which I don't think we want to do. Correct. Right? Correct. Don't we want to be clear that we don't want them? So I guess I'm wondering, do we need to reincorporate that somewhere? Um, Oh, I see. Like instead of just crossing it out, just put no. Say no. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Define it and guess, say no. So. I guess. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to push back on that. A little. I mean, no. Okay. I think I think we need to have the definition in there. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think we can't just cross it out because that means it will be allowed. Mm -hmm. Right. Unless and we unless we go <laughs> the direction of anything that's not. You're right. In there. You're right. You guys are right. So let's keep it. But but yeah. I think that I think that we need to be specific in that because. Mm -hmm. We'll have opinions. Right, right. So, right. You, so, you took it so out. if yeah. we say restaurant with drive through window is not allowed, 
then by default are we limiting the amount of new fast food chains to come into town? Absolutely. Well, we had it as special permit. And therefore, maybe we will no. get more fast casual restaurants instead. I, I think that it needs to, I on, well, we won't get into the table uses, but I think it needs to be in the definitions. Yeah, and I guess that's my, my yes. starting point is I yes. think it needs to be in the definition, yeah. and it yeah. is a different conversation of, okay, so what are we doing? There? Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. It needs to be in the definitions. If it's, yeah. it, it was. And I think it's still, I think the drive-through component, and maybe the drive-through, I don't know how you do this, but maybe the drive, any, any entity, any development that has a drive-through window has to go through a special permit. Yeah, so. You define the drive-through So here's the thing. The it says, yes. um, yeah. in the because table of uses. Right. Drive through, yeah. right? Any forget about what you're, with drive you're taking. Mm -hmm. That drive through has be, the potential um, for the impacts. Right. Right. You guys are both having really great right. thoughts, so we can't hear both of us. Yeah. So, so it's it's restaurant with drive through window and retail store with drive through window. But really, it's just the drive through window because the retail store. That's exactly what you're saying. That's exactly what you're saying. Oh, you guys were saying the same thing. Yeah, we were yeah. saying maybe we define the drive-thru window. We just need to drive through window, through window because through it could be. And then which, the thing, the question then is which category does it No, it goes in many categories because a retail store could others. want to put our Oh, what about other uses? Window. We could put it in other uses. Yeah. drive through window. drive through window associated okay. with. Would be that can be the definition. Financial institution. Or would it be accessory, right? Would it be accessory to a permitted use? Requiring a special permit. Yes. Accessory. Yes. Also, if it's in, in certain bank, districts. Bank, in every district. Drugs. No, in certain districts. We still want no. Oh, okay. And and it's either no or special permit. It's always no in the residential districts. Yeah. Right. And it's then it's special bank. permit in um, whatever other. We'd have to look at it. Because we, we had a different combination. It's, it's always no in the uh, residential districts. Yeah. And then we had it. As different things. So the restaurant one was a special permit in A and industrial, no everywhere else. But retail store, we had special permit in A, industrial, and PUDB. Yeah. Does Calaresa have that? No, they, no. Them, they never asked for one either. I don't know why it's in there. <laughs> different group of people, um, different board, different thought, different, imagination. different night, yeah. yeah. <laughs> different night, <laughs> different dinner. But PUDB existed before Calaresos. Calaresos used the zoning mechanism, Correct. right? So yes. PUDB was not written for Calaresos. No, we, right? just, we expanded that zone to pick yeah. up the residential house at the top there. Right. So I think maybe we just say special permit across the board. We could say no in Business B, right? Because we don't want them downtown, a drive through window. Right? I would say no there. Right. But have we could have. Do you um, have bank drive through windows? Um, it would be included in the definition. Yeah. But right downtown. Well, well, there is one. I mean, there yeah, there is. Yeah, there's two. There's more than one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how they got there. But that doesn't mean because we've there are. been excluding them. Rain co op. But it's always America. been that. Yeah. Well, the Bank of America closed their drive through. Yeah, the, 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 the one down over here, or whatever the bank is like now. You can look at the, there. Oh, yeah. the one right out here. I have no idea what's going on. Thank you. I'm really hungry because I had cookies and I put them on the roof of my car and then I drove away. What? I lost all my cookies. You lost your cookies. <laughs> but you know that that's a really good example of you know for, for the drive-through window. Does a drive-through window include drive-through ATMs, or is it just certain like in-person service windows? I don't know if it makes a difference. I, I like Tony's approach. It's an accessory use to yeah. an approved. Uh, it's yeah. an accessory to an approved primary use, mm -hmm. and uh, the yeah, special permit special. gives you the control. Of it. And then let's just think about where we absolutely don't want it. Yeah. We didn't want it in the downtown because we wanted people to get out of their car and walk it, but... Downtown should be walkable. I think so. But for banking, it's okay. No, no, they just no, happen to be. Really, they don't need it. They don't they just really, happen. No one goes to the bank anymore. No one goes to the bank anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the cloud. I went to the Bank of America. I had to. This was in the last week. I had like like last two weeks. I had to. I had to. I can't remember what I was doing. I had to go to the teller window. I know it was before vacation. I had to get some cash. But like it, like I wanted to get a lot of ones. I didn't know how to use the. I said, what do I do here? <laughs> I didn't know how to have an in-person interaction at the bank. <laughs> Anyone want to charge you for that interaction? <laughs> you 
running into any particular denominations and I didn't know what to do. <laughs> laughing at us because we're being snobby. Not being snobby. All right. Well, thank you all. all right. Andrew loves the bank, but his doppelganger twin brother works at the <laughs> bank downtown, so he's allowed to go to the bank. <laughs> Is that it? Are we done? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. I just... Oh, yeah. Wait. Um, well, now that we understand more about what you think, we can fine-tune the table. Talk about it next time. Yep. And yeah. I included a couple of other things. I didn't know where they fell. Yes. Can you email this to me so I can so you can keep your flash drive? And I just do a copy over there. We can't. We don't can't. have access to our internet. Right. My server is through our computers here anymore. Security. Security. You also shouldn't be plugging in a hard uh, the flash drive or something. It's <laughs> sorry. Well, so long as the machine is segregated from the network, you're fine. Which is what they've can done. Can it transmit coronavirus? No viruses. I don't even have a cold. Other than that, you're an RMLD. <laughs> they got hit by ransomware two weeks ago. Did they? Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Hence why we can no longer. We are tightening our security. I'll take my thumb drive back. back. Request, Julie? Of course. Uh, since we're looking at zoning, I would like to look at 9.1.1.1. Oh, goodness. Parking section? It hit one little change. Right now, if you're within 300 feet of a public parking space, you don't need to meet any parking requirements to retail. That is not a little change. That's not a little change. That is change. no way. No. So we know, and we talk yeah. about this all yeah. the time, that the parking bylaw is a nightmare yeah. uh, for many different reasons, mainly because it's, it's extremely vague. It doesn't talk about most things that we have, like in the use table, and, and, but it's like a whole other. Okay. I just wanted to change the shall to may. So that they don't automatically get a free pass. That was my thought process. Yeah, and I will that, defer to the board. I think. I mean, that's a good suggestion, Tony. Yeah. Um, I think that at this point, we don't have. If someone were to come in and say, um, it, it, we, if we change that, right? How would we evaluate that? Of the shall, shall versus they come in and say, um, yeah, yeah, we're going to use the 300. We're with the 300. Right. Yes. Yes. What do we do to say, no, you can't, even though every other business in town, but you, we're deciding that now you can't. What's the process? I think that's the probably the conversation we need to sort of have and be aware of. but. We very well may want to go there. Um, I think we have that leeway in the, uh, in the 40 R, right? Because we said we're going to start holding yes. developers now that we've right. sort of reached some sort of critical mass. Yeah, we're going to hold them to that number. We're going to hold them to prove the, the yeah. We can make it work by requiring the parking plan. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we have but a lot of 40 R. So if they just come in to business B. Yeah. But everything coming into business B right now is going to be small, I think. Well, it would be replaced. It else. would generally be the replacement of an existing commercial property. True. Right. Right. And Anything so big someone have to some, come in under 40 hours. Something went away. Either something comes work. in. Is it more parking intensive or less parking is, intensive yeah. than the previous use? You can't see how. Okay. Right. I, feather banner. You know, has a feather banner? Cupcake City. Cupcake City. It's on the top of the list. No, I think it is on top of the list. It's really, really hard to see. I think up the entire parking lot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I drove by Cupcake City like five days in a row. I was determined to figure out where it was located after talking to the guy. And I drove to work five days in a row, and I couldn't find. Did you figure out where Cupcake City is? This is before all the pink signs and the feather banners. But I, like, matters. if you're coming up Route 28, you just—it's just you around a turn. There's like a like a wall. Well, and you're looking at the road. And, you're not looking. And you're, yeah, because yeah. Now, and now speeds are so much faster, and it's like yeah. So it's really hard, it's hard to, see to see next to the Cupcake City van with all the signage on it <laughs> and the sign and the feather banner. Do you know what? It's it's totally you're not always there. Where it was. <laughs> Which is across the street from the three and the feather Arrows banner wasn't trucks there at parked the on the front <laughs> strategically. Arrows I have no problem seeing. But anyway, 
We're on it. We know. Um, yeah. So. Um, do we need to do something with um, item? Oh, you need to continue to um, me. So yeah, mm -hmm. at 8 p.m. we had um, <laughs> an item on our agenda, which was a continuation of public hearing for 258 262 uh, Main Street. And they requested that um, to be continued to April 13th. At, at um, we would like to uh, read it out um, at some time. 8 p.m. At 8 p.m. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? All right. Gracious. What? You guys are going to you're not going to talk about zoning next meeting, I don't think. Okay. Too many things on the zoning. things. Uh, we'll see what happens. Well, we'll see what happens. They might not be ready to. Yeah, that's true. That's true. 258 probably won't be ready. I have a Right. Right. Signage. We spoke too soon. <laughs> Remember, we approved oh, signs for Remax over the door. Yep. Right. Now they have a paper sign in the window. In addition to that, is that permitted? Sorry, I missed the question. Remax yes. has a sign that we did approve over the door. Yep. Hold on. Mm -hmm. They also have a paper one in the window. Did we? That? We don't regulate window signage. There are parameters around them that we can look to Bigger enforce. Bigger than what's over the door. As long as it, Does I it won't get two into thirty percent of yeah. the window. Yeah, so we can look at it. it. I'll look at Take it. Take a peek. Yeah. I'll look. Anything else? Anything else we should take over? a look at? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you can do signage. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Time no. <laughs> Putting off way more than we can shoot this time around. Um, Especially considering that we might all die. Do you want anything else? Do you have anything else? <laughs> Just don't <laughs> check it. You're oh. not going to um. die. <laughs> Listen, I had Good. to ask my doctor if it was okay for me to go to Celtic Sojourn in Worcester. It's still, it's still being held? It's still being held. We were, as mentioned last time, we awarded that MVP planning grant. Yeah. We did schedule the public workshop Tuesday, March 31st from 9 to 5.30. I know it's a tough time, but... Oh, during the day? Yeah. Just so eight if, hour day. Yeah, so if anyone can make it, it would be greatly appreciated that you be there. You'll get a formal invite tomorrow, but... Depends on whether I'm still on jury duty. Is it disruptive if we can't go to the whole thing, but no. only a portion of nope. it? I'd like to come to at least a portion of it. Yes, please. You need to notice it anyways, just in case there's more of us, then does it yeah. matter? We will. Yeah, I will. Not to do that very long. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you guys might be here? 31st. Yeah. Tuesday. 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 Library. Yep, at the library. 31st is the one day of the month I can't do it. Last day of the month, I have too much processing. Yeah, that's a good day for sure. <laughs> I can come to a question of that. Great. Like either in the morning or the early afternoon. Great. Great. Either way. Yeah. Me too. Great. Great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> just called her. I just wrote down Rachel. Just send me a reminder of the times. So yep. On. Yep. I'll send a letter tomorrow and. Can get confirmation and stuff. We are also applying to be redesignated as a housing choice community. Mm -hmm. um, housing choice, the state has set parameters of you've generated within the last five years, you've generated 3% or 300 more housing units, or 5% and 500 more housing units. Um, and we qualify for the 3%. If you qualify for the 3%, you also have to prove that you've met a certain number of the state's determined best practices around housing. So two years ago... What kind of housing stock? Apartments, condos, any, single just family? new units. So any new units. So we have, with VIEW permit, we have really good reporting of our two units. And, numbers um, are up. We qualified two years ago, um, and then we were able to receive a grant for $50,000 to work with Gamble Associates to help us with the rede redesign um, of the new crossing road area. And so that would open up like more grant possibilities for us again. So it's great. Yeah. Yep. 
and ongoing conversations with the select board about the downtown parking system. Um, we'll be back on Tuesday, March 17th for, for more. How does the road diet meeting go? Um, that, or is that just the state? I was there. Yeah, it was okay. It was um, just a meeting really for the businesses on North and South Main to provide feedback um, to MassDOT and to staff about that. Um, so yeah, there was some really good feedback that came out of it. And we have another all day open house scheduled for March 24th, which is a Tuesday. Um, and it's gonna be actually at the new <coughs> Staples Spotlight Room in the, in the Staples, in Staples Car Bath and Portion. <coughs> Um, they have a spotlight room, so we're going to have it there, and there'll be a lot more outreach and lots of lots more people invited, and, and that'll be you know, an all-day kind of come and give us your feedback, and then there'll be a little presentation um, and a public meeting session at the end. Okay. So. Great. Yeah. yeah. Just the highlights. We're so right. glad you're back. Oh, thanks. <laughs> It's been, it was March 12th last year was my last day. I know. Yeah, and then June 3rd I was back. Me more than anyone. <laughs> oh, Andrew. <laughs> well, I missed you. You're still fighting mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Uh, you have a second? All those in favor? All right.